Hey, what's up, everybody? Rock J back again Thursday night. A little beer flow time. Me, myself, along with Eric from Eric and Lions Fan. Make sure you check out his channel. All together, one word, Eric and Lions Fan. And, of course, Todd, our buddy here from Indiana. Still no channel, but we're still working on that. How you guys <laughs> feeling tonight? I'm ready to drink the beer. <laughs> well, this is actually my second session, so... Ooh. I drank a little bit earlier, and then, you know, you don't drink and drive. So he drank, I ate, I let it cool off, and I came home, and I'm going to crack open a couple more, which may be a good or not such a good thing, because I have to get up freaking early tomorrow to drive to the office. And you guys know I hate to drive to the office because traffic sucks. Plus, I had to leave an hour earlier, and I can't just go from my bed to my office. So uh, sucks. Uh, 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 get the out, fellas, get the violins oh, out. All, to get, <laughs> all together now. All together now. Yeah. <laughs> so, we, feel so, we feel so bad for you, Rod J. We do. <laughs> when the office is about 20, 30 feet away from the bed, it does make a nice little play for sure. But <laughs> it is what it is. So I'm, tonight I'm actually drinking. And I don't know if you've seen I know, Todd, you haven't seen this one. But I'm drinking Unveiled Brewing. So this is their... Vanilla, I'm trying to get my thing where it doesn't tilt right. Vanilla Dark Ale. And this is like a new line they introduced at Kroger. It's actually from World Brews out of Abita Springs, Louisiana. Mm. So it might be an offshoot of Abita Brewery. I have no idea. I never heard of them before. But they had six pack of these, and it was, I think, $8.98 or something. Kind of an introductory thing. And then they're going up to like $10.99 or something. But I've seen a, a few of these pop up around, so I picked it up, and they have a triple, I mean, not a triple, a double IPA, and then they had another one. I can't remember what it is. And then, of course, this one, the Vanilla Dark Ale. I figured I'd give it a whirl and uh, sit back and enjoy. And what I'll do at some point is upload a video on that as well. But what are you guys drinking? Go ahead, Todd. I've got uh, one from your neighborhood, Rod, from Westerman Brewing Company. Good call. Good call. Uh, mango, pomegranate, Berliner Weissen. It was a uh, 10th anniversary uh, ale that they made for their 10th uh, year anniversary of the brewery. And this one is uh, Berliner Weissen style ale brewing with mango and pomegranate, cinnamon, vanilla, and ginger added. Comes in at 5.5%. Now, is that from your brother from being up here? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Every now and again, I get him. I can get him to stop and grab me a few things on the way in when he comes <laughs> back in town. <laughs> so if he grabs anything at Listerman, it's not going to be a bad brew. No, no last time, it's been about a month. I've had this one for about a month now, I guess. I haven't had one yet, but yeah, uh, he brought back four or five different ones from Listerman last time. So Nice. I think nice. I think this is the last one of the uh, group that he brought back this time that I haven't tried yet. Probably let it sit a little longer than I should, but that's all right. It's been cold all the whole time, so it should be all right. Excellent, excellent. And what do you got there, Eric? I got a tried and true uh, Russian Imperial Stout from the Bells Brewing. I have their Expedition Stout. Ooh, nice. Ten and a half percent. Uh, unlimited shelf life packaged on August 29th of 2018. Nice. I'm not going to go wrong with that. And let's see, you got up at it was like uh, 29 degrees or something this morning. So, 26. yeah, 20. So, you're into that stout. For those that have to have a certain weather for stouts, you're in that stout weather for sure. So, yep, yep. Me, I'll drink that. Nails, pumpkins, all that sort of stuff. Eric, does it actually say that on the bottle? Would you say with no expiration date or no? Yeah, it says shelf life unlimited. Shelf life unlimited, nice. yeah. Uh, I, they're, I think they have Monday, if anyone's watching from the Michigan area, or Todd or Rod, if, you wanted, if you're available Monday, at Bell, right at Bell's, they have their uh, kind of their grand, not grand opening, but their, can't even really think of how it, but they're going to present the, the bourbon barrel aged version of their expedition style. Yeah, I saw something online about that too. That that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I wonder what is that going to. Is that ABB, going to distro? Though, you're already at 
eventually it's going to distro. I'm not going to be able to go there because I got to be at work on Monday. I could technically play hooky and go there on Monday, but <laughs> we won't tell him say anything. <laughs> we won't tell anybody. He'll be good to go. And unfortunately, I'm having it in a founder's glass, which we all know founder's uh, situation that they're in. Yeah. Yeah, as we did, I don't know if I was going to talk about that or not, but yeah, that might be something we address here too. But well, let me just put this on the the better half. Come okay. on, <laughs> and then Joe, our our fourth our fourth comrade, he actually can't make it. He just sent a thing wishing us for a good show tonight, so he's actually tied up. So we'll uh, hopefully have him back here next week on the show that he'll be able to catch up on things and. He should have some interesting beers because him and his uh, pops have been rolling around visiting some different things. So it'll be interesting to hear some of the tales from Joe. And then out in the comments section, welcome Hillbilly and Backwoods and Matthew B, who we have all out there. Hillbilly says he's searching for the perfect pumpkin beer and wine. Uh, Backwoods Billy, uh, emoji of beer and pizza. What's up? Lots of beer festivals here on the Del Mar Virginia Eastern Shore pumpkin s'mores, Oktoberfest beers, no doubt, no doubt. And uh, I don't know if you guys have any of the beer had any of the s'mores type beers, but there are some interesting combinations out there as well. And the last one I actually had, I think, was at one of the beer festivals. But I always look forward to those coming out because this is the time to get some of those flavorful type beers along those lines. Um, Hillbilly, he's it was just up my way in Union. I, I didn't get a message. I didn't get a text. I didn't get a call. I mean, you should let me know. You're like, you're in Union. You were basically 15 minutes from me. You know, we could have definitely threw down some beer. Could have got you some Rod J deal around town, but you didn't. <laughs> you didn't reach out. You got to reach out. Uh, then Hillbilly said hello back to Billy. And then Billy, Hillbilly said hi. I mean, Billy said hi back to Hillbilly. Asked if he tried All Tech Kentucky Bourbon Barrel Pumpkin yet. Personally, he loves Dominion Breweries Pumpkin. Budweiser collab brew, Jack Daniels, uh, Bourbon Barrel, Oktoberfest. And Foamy Head, welcome Foamy Head. He said he's having a uh, make IPA clear again for La Cumbre Brewing. Uh, Matthew B says, what's up, all? And uh, Backwoods Billy says, hey. And I'm starting to realize again, not having Joe reading all his comments, trying to stay on top of everything. <laughs> um, Backwoods says, I love darker, maltier beers in the fall and winter. Porter Stouts, Dunkles, Brown Ales, Marzen, S'mores Beer, Schwartz Beer, Pumpkin Beer. Uh, and the Eric had given him a what's up, peeps. And Eric has a fresh one this time, <laughs> back with Billy says. <laughs> <laughs> and Cody Stark, what's happening? Welcome. He said, what's up, everyone? Hope you're doing well and hope you are as well, Cody. And Eric responded, at least it isn't a six-year-old IPA from Brooklyn. And Brandon Bur oh. Board Beer just showed up, and he laughed at that as well. So welcome, everybody. And I will say this one from Unveiled, I ended up putting it on Untapped, and it's like, for me, like a three, two, five out of five. I mean, I get like the vanilla, and I get some cream smoothness from it and everything, and I'm getting some of the chocolate in there. It's not a bad taste. The one at three, two, five isn't a, a big score for a bad score for me, by the way. So sometimes people will ask about how I rate stuff, and usually if I give something a five, that's to me is like a top shelf score. If I give it a, a four, then it's a very good score. If I give it a three, it's solid. And if I give it like a two, it's okay. If I give it a one, it's just basically saying I've had better. So I try to score it out that way now. It's a kind of a simple thing on tap. So it is a solid beer. I don't know if I would pay the price when it goes to like the ten ninety nine that they had on this on the, uh, tag and saying this was on sale at eight eighty eight or eight ninety eight or whatever it is now. But for that price, it's okay. I think there's better options you could probably pick up for something like this, for this type of beer. But, you know, it is what it is. It's a new beer. I wanted to try it. And when I do the review on it, I'll talk more about it at that point. Were those, uh, was that six-pack? Yeah, this is a six-pack at Kroger, yeah. Have you had the, the uh, beers that Walmart puts out? No, I don't usually go to Walmart much, although I had to go there for one thing about a a month or so ago, I said, I'll go to the beer area and just see what they may have there. And it was only for us here in Northern Kentucky, it was mainly just macros. There wasn't really much well, craft at all there or any of like a store type craft. You're not talking about the Rockdales, are you, Todd? No, no, they have a uh, mixed 12 pack of uh, craft beer that they put out. Um, I forget who brewed it for them, 
I mean, it's obviously a contract brew, but it's it's like ten or eleven dollars for a twelve pack. I've never had any of them. I don't I don't go to Walmart that often either, but I've seen them there a few times that I have gone. So they're it's trying like to get an IPA. Uh, there's an IPA like a Pilsner. I'm not sure what all has in it. So they've tried to get a line like Trader Joe's, I guess, for a contract rule. Probably, yeah. Well, I was, I, was, well, I was asking is if you had any of those, if it was yeah. similar to something. No, I haven't had that one. I, I will say right now, because I let these sit out for about 20 minutes before the show start, and I'm getting a nice feel of the caramel coming out of it, um, which I actually do like about it. And if you think of the old... I always think of it as the old candies as a kid because my grandparents would have the caramel in the little wrapper type thing. I don't know. Yeah. Outside, of just call them caramel candy because that's all they really are, a block of caramel. It's mm -hmm. got that nice aroma from like uh, you were sniffing that candy and stuff. So that's kind of cool about it. Speaking of nice caramel, stuff. speaking of caramel, I had that salted caramel uh, dragon's milk the other night. Ooh, that thing was awesome. Would you? So you really liked that one then? Yeah, I liked it a lot. Yeah. That was really good. I can't. I want to. I can't wait till. I can't wait till the mango or the uh, coconut banana hits, hits the shelves here in Indiana. Well, now, what was the one I sent you, Rod, from the Dragon's Mill? That was just. That might have been the s'mores one that you sent me before. Yeah, something. it was a s'mores one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that what we had last year. Yeah, and I've got the salted caramel from Sierra Nevada now. Not Sierra Nevada, but Southern Tier downstairs that I haven't done as of yet. I need to drink that one. Um, I'm trying to get through some of the beers and I was going through stuff the other day. I just started drinking some of the beers because I got so many. I'm trying to do the videos for them. And then I realized I have some that are actually still tasting really good. Like again, you'll find as you're drinking more of these beers, you can actually outdo what maybe their shelf life is or whatever. Um, but I didn't do a review on them because they were kind of outside of it. So I wasn't sure. And I said, I want to give the brewer a fair shot, but I needed to drink them anyway. And I was surprised how good a lot of them still are. So um, I did like the uh, the Bell's Abracadabra, and then I did um, a few other ones. I'm trying to think, let me think of my untapped here. I think that one just hit the shelves again this week. Yeah, that probably just came back out again. Um, I did the Columbus Brewing out of Columbus, Ohio, the Inverness uh, Scottish Ale, which was pretty good. Um, I had one of the Happy Ambers in there still, which was still pretty decent. Um, which I'll have to buy another one now so I can do a review on it because I still haven't done a review on that one. I had the Deschutes Obsidian Stout, which was still really solid. And then I had one of the Erdinger's Wise Beers, the Hefeweizen. And then I had the uh, the Franz and Connor Hefeweizen, which is also pretty good. So, But, you know, you look at some of these and it's kind of like um, I want to drink them, but I don't want to rate them because, I, like I said, I want to give a fair shot there. But they were still pretty decent. I did do the the not your father's root beer, ten point seven percent, and I had a twenty two ounce bottle of it. And diabetes, it was diabetes for sure. But it wasn't as bad as when we did our last episode of the malt and Todd had the four loco. But I, I <laughs> you know, I powered through it, and I was like, I think it was on a game, it was on my gaming channel doing Call of Duty or something. I was like, I'll finish it because I opened it, but you know. Yeah, I just powered, but it was like drinking syrup. It was like being a super troopers in that syrup scene. Yeah. Trying to drink that thing down. So, yeah, I'm sure my sugar spiked that day for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see here. Uh, back with, as I said, LL Eric, I still think about that Brooklyn Brewery. Um, <laughs> Cody Stark says, couldn't even imagine a six year old beer with the emoji of, of a face about to puke. Hey, the puke. <laughs> video, video was out there somewhere. I can't remember. I think it was on your channel, wasn't it, Ron? Yeah, I think it was the one that we did the Brooklyn review. It was the Brooklyn, yeah, Brewery, yeah, 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 yeah. Brooklyn Brewery, um, beer, uh, beer flow. And then, uh, <laughs> what is it? Um, back was said it was not a good looking beer, Cody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Cody said Rockdale Light, LMAO. Uh, Burning Beer. Never thought about buying a beer at Walmart. LOL, insert red note, redneck joke here. Um, <laughs> For sure. Cody says Aldi has craft beer also, which they do have that as well. And in fact, I found the one there, which was their IPA, and it's from out of, uh, I think, Wisconsin. Um, Hop lift or something like that. Bad. Which one? Isn't it called like Hop Lift or something? Yeah, lift yeah or Hop something? Lift. You get like a four yeah. pack, it was like six ninety nine, but it was actually not bad for 
you know, a decent, you know, value price IPA for sure. Um, no, I agree. Yeah, I've had I've had a couple of stuff from all these before, and they're all yeah, fairly yeah. decent for the price. I mean, you know. the funny thing you get about all these, you look at some of the bottles, and you're like, because you always know about craft beer and the whole trademark, and everybody's protective of their stuff. And it's like this logo is damn close. You know what beer it is because the logo is so close to the beer they're copying. Which is <laughs> <funny>. <laughs> it's like coming to America. It's like it doesn't say McDonald's. It says McDowell's, but you know what they're going for. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> oh, Eric, you never said what beer you're drinking tonight. Yeah, it's Bell's Expedition. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. My bad. My, I'm, it's been a long day at work. <laughs> Too many beers right. at separate time. It's already kicking in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let me see here. Um, do, 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 do. And then Cody, uh, Eric said, Cody, I'm going to do that a, uh, a wild series. Well, you going to do what? The Aldi beers or the Walmart beers? or The, the Rockdale beer series. Rockdale the, Light? Yeah. Okay. The Light, the regular, and Ice. Oh, you're living dangerously now. I live dangerously with uh, the uh, two Bud Light Platinums and the Ice House. <laughs> <laughs> that was an interesting episode a couple weeks ago. <laughs> Interesting to say the least. Hey, Eric, you want to do the PSA? Uh, the the. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, we did it like on some malt type brews, yeah. but we didn't get slammed by the malt liquor community, so I feel like they gave us a pass on that one. So that was that was pretty good there. <laughs> we we uh, did or we did not. We did. We didn't get slammed by anybody. You know, we had comments from Malt Mustang and a few of the other guys, and they were all pretty much cool with it. So you know. It was all fun all the way around. God, your beer's not a malt liquor. It's a malt beverage. And Billy says, here on the uh, Del Mar, uh, Virginia Eastern Shore, Walmart is just shit. There's not a lot of big stores. So uh, I guess a lot of people go there because they get you know so much stuff you have at Walmart that you can get all your stuff there. Um, Cody says that would be cool. I'll be sure watching Eric. So he's looking forward to you doing the Rockdale series. Mm -hmm. And um, if you guys haven't subscribed to Eric's channel, by the way, you can go to the three dots across from his name for the comments he posted, and then you'll be able to subscribe to his channel as well and see his uploads as he uploads things. Um, back was Billy Beer Tall Tales Brewing out of uh, Parsonsburg, Maryland, just outside Ocean City, Maryland, has an awesome s'mores beer. So does Revelation Craft Brewing Company out of Bethany Beach, Delaware, has a, a store reporter. Um, Cody says, not your father's root beer was the second thing I tried after turning 21, and it was way too sweet for me, Barf. So, yeah. And you know, when they first brought out not your father's root beer here, a lot of the bars were serving it with ice cream. They're making floats out of it, which actually That's helped it out. Say. Sweet with the ice cream in there. Because it kind of settled in, basically, like you were drinking a float. It wasn't as bad as just drinking it straight. I mean, drinking not your father's root beer is almost like the equivalent of drinking Kahlua as a liquor by itself. You're like, you gotta have something with it. You can't just drink it straight. It's just so sweet. Yeah. I know, right? That's the expression you would make, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of the emoji Cody's going with on his comment. So, um, backwards Billy says, Yes, here on Rajay's channel, the six year old IPA. <laughs> <laughs> did you end up throwing all those out, by the way? What did you end up just like? I drain poured them all. You drank them all? Drain poured them. Oh, drain drain poured them. Okay. <laughs> I was gonna say. Uh, you, should send those, you should have sent those out to people as a mystery beer. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh, here you go, Joe. No, that that would, that would, <laughs> the only thing that better judgment on April 1st is a practical joke, right? Oh. Send out a mystery beer. <laughs> You're not up until April 1. Yeah. <laughs> and Bever uh, Billy says in Beverage Industry Magazine, the brewery that brews all these beer was just acquired. Um, he said he does love, but why is there like platinum? And he also says, Eric, Raj, you can just click on some on someone's icon. It takes you to that person's channel. Just click subscribe. Yeah, so you can do that, but you can also click the three dots. So whatever is easier for you. And then you can go ahead. And also, you know, if you guys haven't checked out Backwoods Billy, uh, he has his beer channel. You can also click on uh, his stuff to see what he's doing. If you do like wine... Um, and now I'm coming, he's weird. He's getting in our territory, fellas. He's, uh, he's starting to do beer reviews. I saw 
Hillbilly. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Wine and beer. He had a beer review the other day. So you can also oh, check out Hillbilly Wine. Video. And he does coffee. He's just trying to hit all the liquids, I guess. Well, what was his first beer that he did? Uh, let me see. Let me go back and take a look at it real quick. Give me one second. Bro, does that mean you're going to do start doing some wine now? I mean, the, the, whole, <laughs> the whole down my top 50, right? So. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see. What did oh, he do? Billy Wine. I think he's in the top 50. I think he'll build. Yeah, he was right behind me in the top 50. <laughs> Last I looked, he was right behind me, which is weird. Cause... So. He I got to did... say, but while Rod's looking that up, I have to say that Shorts Brewing has stepped up their game. They finally put the ABD on at least in the hands. They haven't gone to the bottom. Oh, nice. They've got nice. it on the can. Well, he actually did it from your favorite brewery, Brooklyn, and he did the Post Road Pumpkin Ale three days ago. Ah, my favorite brewery. Hey, I got a banana from him. <laughs> he did the meeting, so. Which kind of ties in tonight. I was like, um, I had the pumpkin beer yet, question mark, inside the title. And uh, I did drink another pumpkin beer tonight. So. That was my second pumpkin beer of the season thus far. Not really hunting them out, but it's kind of like we were at a restaurant. It was actually a Scottish restaurant. They have 20 taps and saw what they had on there. And I had 18 of their beers already. So one, two, one of the beers I didn't have was the Strangeville pumpkin from the brew kettle. And that was actually pretty decent of a pumpkin beer. So nice. I'll start getting to a little bit more here. I do have a couple in the uh, mini fridge downstairs that I'll do a review on at some point as well. But, um, you know, it's getting to that point. I guess I'll, I guess it feels more now doing a pumpkin beer to me than what it was earlier on. People were doing them. So, yeah, I got the cold press coffee. Todd, you, you actually recommended that, the pumpkin cold press coffee. And then I got the uh, Saga Tuck. I got their, what is it, Saga Tuck pumpkin beer, and it's, it has chai in it, too. Oh, interesting. Okay. Well, this would be a spicy yeah, pumpkin, you yeah. know. Yeah, last year we had a beer from uh, Samuel Adams, and it had chai in it as well. This was the, actually two years ago, I guess, for one of the beer festivals we had at the Duke Energy Center. And it was it was decent. It was a surprise. It was the first time I had chai in a beer. So, Did you like it or not? Or? Yeah, I thought it was okay. I thought it was decent enough. I think I gave it like a three or three and a half out of five. It was uh, it was different. I mean, like I'm used to chai more like in stuff I get at Starbucks, but yeah. it wasn't it wasn't too bad. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I would drink it again. I went and hunt it down, but you know, if it was there, I would definitely give it another knock. Um, let's see here. Yeah, and uh, Billy said uh, he has done a few beers talking about um hillbilly actually doing some of the beer reviews cody mm -hmm. says he found a brewery five minutes from his house called oracle brewing really a neat place just for friends with the small place you could bring food into and try their beer so that's pretty cool it's always nice finding local breweries in your area and yeah. kick back and relax and especially you like to say they're not located yet by a lot of other people so people aren't on top of you everywhere you can kind of spread out a little bit and have a nice little cubby hole or whatever your own little location type thing but at the same point, you need people to find them so they stay in business. Mm -hmm. yep. um, Billy says he has a crap ton of beer festivals to post interviews with the brewery's head brewer and owner's attendees, organizer, etc. Has a few beer and wine accessory reviews as well and some beer and wine reviews. So, yeah, so Billy's got a lot of stuff happening on his channel. And like I said, I need to still catch up on some there. Work has been like kind of crazy. So I'm trying to catch up on everybody's stuff. And watch these different videos and the fact that i've actually changed up my schedule for posting stuff so for those of you watching that want to kind of see the uploads when i'm uploading stuff i'm actually switching up now so thursday nights we you know we have the beer flow show here about 9 15 and then fridays i'll be doing beer uploads at uh about nine o'clock Eastern, you'll get that. And then Saturday and Sunday are going to be like double days for me. So I'm going to do a beer upload. Target at about uh, 5 o'clock, 5 p.m. Eastern at night, and then 9 o'clock again. And then um, that'll be it, really. So Thursday through Sunday, I'm going to try to see this new schedule. will be the posting and stuff. 
And then that gives me the other days to kind of do some of the editing and checking out some of the other videos and other stuff I want to get done. I'm mm -hmm. um, also on the gaming channel. I'll be doing stuff over there too with some of those other off days as well. So yeah. I just feel like, and I don't know if you run into this, Eric, when you're doing a channel, you all get, you got to like fragment this time out to actually get stuff done. And I've been trying to get yep. videos up every day and I've been doing it for a while, but it's just getting to a point. And that's the other thing. Like, so, you know, I apologize to everybody watching. If I ain't gotten to your comments yet, I am going to answer comments this weekend that people have left on the videos. I believe everybody should answer comments when comments are left. I just haven't had a chance to get mm -hmm. done. So this will free up more time for me to do that kind of stuff too and stay up on that. So I will be for me, I mean, right, right. right. For me, I do yeah, mine my first thing in the morning. I'll, you know, go up, start my coffee, and then after obviously done taking a shower, I'll come down, and, uh, fire up my computer, get a cup of coffee, and get into this my little office area here, where and I'll just respond back. To them, which I don't really don't have a lot on my channel, but you know, every day I'll look through there and see if there's somebody made a comment, and if so, respond back to them. Yeah. And, and I'm probably going to use. There's actually an app you can put on your phone from TubeBuddy. And you can actually use that to reply as well. So I'll probably start replying some stuff back from the phone and stuff like that. It'll be a little bit easier than trying to pull anything up as well. So yeah. trying to just stay on top of that and um, reply back to everybody. So if I didn't get back to you again, do apologize. We'll be getting back to you here shortly on everything. And um, definitely appreciate all the feedback and the people asking stuff. And I had one of the guys uh, reply back earlier who actually liked one of the videos I did on the uh the Anderson uh, brothers, David triple and stuff. So he went on, got a four pack, really enjoyed it and stuff. So, you know, I try to, I try to stay honest as I can with all the reviews. And, you know, I, if I don't believe something in the beer, I'm not going to say it. And he actually went out and got it after seeing me talk about it some and really did enjoy it. So that's a cool thing that, you know, have able to help him find a new beer to take a look at. Um, Billy says, if you make friends with the brewers, you can get some geese to brew with. Um, Cody says, I, I hear you there. School during the day, one to four, then work seven to seven. Ooh, seven to seven. Wow. I remember um, those 12 hour days. They were a bitch. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and backwards, Billy says, Me too, Rod. I'm behind on my YouTube watching due to the beer wine festivals plus interviews. It's a lot. It's just the season or this. Yeah, so he's got a beer and wine glass. Yeah, it's just, it's just a lot happening. And we're going to get into more stuff. And, you know, I was happy to go out. I went out there and did that, uh, the video I did with uh, Mad Tree, which was a cool thing. So we got that done. And I wanted to get that up uploaded as soon as I could because it was a timely type thing as well. Um, I like going out there. I like to go out there and do more just kind of live stream videos. Like the one with Black Cloyster was definitely a good time. So I can get more of that stuff out there. And I've had a couple other breweries get in touch with me to take a look at some of their stuff. So hopefully get some more of that stuff going here at some point. And then uh, Eric agreed with Backwoods, say I think we all are as far as the time crunch and everything. So mm -hmm. uh, right now you've got the the beers you got for the pumpkin, and you did oh. the one with the so you did the one with the Southern Tier pumpkin, and you did the Warlock. Ah, uh, there we go. I, I so, well, What's I had a little bit of a lag there. Sorry. Oh, okay, you were flagging me down. Like you're trying to land a plane or something. You're giving me hand sign. Like, yeah, you're bringing it, bring it. <laughs> <laughs> what were you saying? I'm sorry, man. <laughs> so any of the – so you had those two, which are two good beers, and you put them together, which was a pretty good thing as well. Yeah. Um, any other beers that were pumpkin outside the ones – you got the ones now we just talked about. Any other ones, other ones you've had out there yet that you really like? I, the, that's really the only one that I've had for was a pumpkin beer with the, the pump king and the warlock. And I've got the, the, the cold pressed coffee, like I said before, in the refrigerator waiting to do a review on. Uh, but that's really the only pumpkin beer so I've had. Like I said, I got the, the Saugatuck Brewing, their, their version of a uh, pumpkin beer with the China, which I still, it's in the refrigerator as well. But that's all I've had is a pumpkin and the Warlock. Yeah. What about you, Todd? Is there anything that you actually have liked thus far on the pumpkin front? Um, the. You know, the Sam Adams Oktoberfest was was pretty decent. Uh, I really like the uh, uh, shoot, Sierra Nevada's. Uh, um, uh, you talking about, 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 about Oktoberfest? You talking about pumpkin? Oh, just pump. Well, I don't. You just talking about pumpkin in general? Well, have you had any this season yet that you like? No, anything? no, not any just regular pumpkin meals. I have. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Billy says he didn't care for Southern Tears Pumpkin this year. 
Dogfish had that more spicy thought on their their addition this year. I thought it was exactly the same. Yeah. I haven't done Pumpkin this year. I haven't done Warlock. Warlock is actually more of a favorite for me than Pumpkin, but those like the two usually top ones. I like Dogfish head pumpkin beer usually. Haven't had it yet this year. Billy may mention again of the All Tech Kentucky Bourbon Barrel. I've had that in the past. All Tech and Todd, you know this from being close in Kentucky, is it's a hit and miss brewery for me. That's not one that actually on the pumpkin that I it was okay. It wasn't great for me. It was like a hit and miss. Like if they're cream ale, I really like their um their coffee stout I really like. But some of their other ones, just their bourbon stuff, it's kinda like eh, it's okay, but it's like it doesn't really push me as much. I agree. I think their cream ale is probably the best beer they have. Yeah. And you would think like that's when I could actually drink a few of those and you would think it might get too sweet, but that actually I could drink those for a little bit of time for sure. And uh, yeah, and you know, I think that one, I think that one got a start from a uh, homebrew contest and one of the homebrewers won with a cream ale and then I think they took it over or got the rest bought the recipe from them. I'm not sure how that worked out. But then they started yeah. brewing it after that. Yeah. Well, does Stone or the Shoots or maybe one of the bigger national breweries have a pumpkin beer? Uh, I'm trying to think if Stone did a pumpkin one. I don't know if they actually had done one. Maybe some of the West Coast. Coast. Well, I think for some of the ones out there, you get some stuff that are doing pumpkin. Um, see, I don't really hunt pumpkin down that much. The yeah, really I know. know. I kind of see it, and if it's out there, um, I'll pick it up or give it a try, possibly. But I don't know yeah. if anybody's watching any of the key pumpkin beers that people really like out there. You know, let us know what you're what you're thinking. And again, a burning beer mentioned Engelbert Pumperdink, which I've heard that one too. It's actually a pretty good one. Um, and then Drunken One's in the house. What's happening, Drunken One? So What's going on, buddy? Cheers, cheers to everybody. Cheers. Then, cheers. Uh, Drunken One always has a lot of good stuff on his channel happening, so make sure you guys check him out too. Um, Cody said, I think the one I liked was Oktoberfest by North Peak. I didn't have the North Peak one yet from Oktoberfest. I think this year, the Oktoberfest that I liked, I only had a few. But I think the uh, the Sierra Nevada one I thought was done pretty well with um, their collaboration. Um, it's hard to mess it up when you're working with Western Foner, but they did a pretty good one there. But I can't say I've had enough of a universe of the ones out there. There are some out there I saw. It's kind of like I have to work myself up sometimes to actually get the Oktoberfest, because I'm not a huge Marzen type fan. I can drink it when it's there, but it's not something that I would rather enjoy as much. So I guess we all have I forgot I did. Go ahead, Todd. Oh, sorry, Ralph. I was just going to say, I forgot I did have the Plum King for this year. Yeah. I think we all, but like when looking at these other styles, I think we all have our blind spots for certain things. And I'd like to try to get into as much as possible, but it's just, you know, there's so many beers out there. It's kind of like, do I want to try this one or I'd rather go over these styles and try all the different ones over here? Like if I go into uh, the store, I've become like a fan of short spears. So if I see different short spears in there, I'm going to grab a lot of those rather than go and get like a pumpkin or something. That's because I'm just into that style right now. So. I don't think there's really a certain style for me, but if Revolution's available, I'll get something from Revolution Brewing. Mm -hmm. um, what's another one that's uh, a kind of upstart one? I did like uh, the Buffalo Sweat. Who, who makes the Buffalo Sweat? It escapes me. Tall uh, Grass. Yeah, Tall Grass, when they were producing beers. I liked a lot of their stuff when they were there. Uh, a lot of the Michigan microbreweries, I'm from Michigan, so obviously I try to seek those guys out. But if there's a beer, a new beer that's kind of hit our shelves up here, I'm going to try them out. And if I like one of their beers, I may go to the next one and their next one and their next one. And I usually find that if I like one, one of their beers, usually the beers, the rest of their line is usually pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah, I've got a couple of tall grass down there, too. I have to I have to drink still. I haven't tried. And That's a shame that they've quit production, too, because I thought they were a pretty good brewery. Yeah, we have to keep an eye to see if they're doing anything else. I like guess, and they're trying to still hang in there or what. But again, you know, to their own credit, they knew they it seemed like they stretched themselves out. And when people started saying, "I'm just going to go local community," they were the outcasts, right? Even though they were good in other areas, trying to support their own local beer, they were the short man getting stick or whatever. You think it was um, a little bit too fast? 
Um, well, it did over time, but I think when they realized they were like, you know, from the article I read, they were in 22 different states. And, you know, it's like coming in here to Cincinnati, you have to have enough of a base to actually enjoy those beers. Because if you mm-hmm. come here, you got people that are Ryan Geist fans, Mad Tree fans, Listerman fans, um, Braxton fans, all these different breweries you have. And then you have the smaller ones that aren't to that level yet that they want to try to get out there and, and do a little bit more with. So mm-hmm. unless you're carrying maybe like that national name behind you, you may struggle a bit, right? If you're like, sort of like a Sierra Nevada and you got your stuff you're coming in with, or you're in New Belgium, you got your stuff you're coming in with. So many other ones that might be lesser known, people might pass up a little bit um, and not really give them a shot as much. So right. that's that. And I think that's where Tallgrass ran into a situation with some of their stuff. It was from what the piece, at least I read and how they talked about it and, what they were kind of seeing there. He said pretty much people were just going more local and we were that the outcast at that point. Yeah, and there and there is there's so many breweries out there that usually can find 10, 15, 20 right in your kind of local within their 50, 75, 100 mile area that you can find good beers within that radius. Yeah. Yeah. You don't really have to go out to the stone or the to the shoes or the Sierra Nevada to get those. Uh, type of beers. At least that's how I view it. I don't know about what anybody else thinks. Yeah. Well, it's funny. We um, at work during the day job today. We went out when I said we had drinks earlier. We were talking about people that was up visiting from down in Birmingham, and she was talking about how they were getting more of a beer scene down there or whatever. Oh yeah, it's even a beer scene. Also. I was like, and it's like we got like three to four different breweries right now that are really doing well on there. And I was like, well, here we got like sixty breweries right now. We're still growing. And she's like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> It was like it. so it's a matter of your universe where you're at. They she thought she was actually they had a good amount. It's like you come up here and we're 15 times more what she has offered down there. It's kind of like the choices are just so spectacular. And then just we do get stuff in, like from Indiana, for instance, you know, people like Three Floyds, so Three Floyds is able to come in and do well because people know the name behind Three Floyds and West Six can come from Lexington because people know the name behind it too. So when you're not from this area. You have to have other good breweries come in that kind of um, people also identify with some, I think, to help them sustain what they're looking to do for the the, uh, market share. Um, Let me see here. Get back to the comments. And then Maddie B says, not a fan of pumpkin, Shaffley pumpkin and a local New Jersey brew from River Horse called the Hippo Lantern. So that's one up in jersey that he actually likes I wonder how far they actually distribute it i don't know if billy if you get that down where you're at or not um kind of like the name though hippo lantern um billy said he loved the budweiser collab brew which was a marzen um cody says his girlfriend tried a pumpkin beer from new belgium which i've had theirs it was a pump kick and actually that one wasn't bad either. I had it on draft and I had it in a bottle. Definitely preferred the draft version, which most of the time you do anyway, because draft is usually the best way to go just about any beer. Budweiser did a collaboration with a... what? No, Budweiser did a Jim Beam collaboration. That's the one that Billy was talking about. Oh, okay. I was going to say the Marsden style. I was like, what? Really? <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. But that's Cody, what I said, too. <laughs> well, that's what Billy said. said it was a Marsden, um that collab. Oh. Um, I don't know if it was really a Marzen one though. Um, I know it was like it was like the bourbon one they did with Jim Beam, unless it was a different it was one. It was a little darker because they had to put the staves in there and they gave it a little bit of a different yeah. color. Mm-hmm. And let's see here. Cody says he's just not into sweeter beers as much, more of a hop head. Uh, Billy says Schwartz beer awesomeness. Yeah, if you I don't know if you like, especially if you like dark beer, Schwartz beers are some really decent beers. And it's funny because sometimes people think it's a new style. It's actually an old style. They're just bringing it back now. But anything out of Germany about beer, pretty much it's going to be a hit. It's not going to be missed by much. So, yeah, the Germans got the beer down for sure. Um, <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> Cody said he tried to branch out of IPAs but haven't found much else he likes. And it's over time, your palate will change. So it was just a matter of, you know, you keep trying different things. Um, you know, you're for, you're an IPA. You might actually at one point get a few of the IPAs that I'll say will carry more of that maltier feel as you get into the double IPA level. And then you might find yourself liking those. And then you might find yourself liking strong L's after that point. 
you might find yourself start to slide a little bit more towards other things. You know, something like some of the styles, I always say they carry a bitterness there, but it's more like a coffee type bitterness, but it's still a type of bitterness with it mm -hmm. in those beers too. So you try different styles, you find it for a while. When I first started, I wasn't a huge fan of wheat beer. Um, I didn't like the wheat ales as much, but I found some of the wheat ales I did like, I started getting more into it and finding some other ones. And now, as you know, Eric Oberon's like my favorite one to actually have there. So, yeah. um, you know, for me, like Oberon's like a sign of spring. So each, each spring, I usually have a few of those. Mm -hmm. uh, do, 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 do. Bernard Beer said, take some shrooms and drink some glitter beer. <laughs> that, would be, <laughs> that would be interesting. <laughs> and then you have some glitter poo and some glitter uh, <laughs> weed. If you're on shrooms, shrooms and you're starting to have glitter poo come out, <laughs> you're really going to freak out. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Cody, you know, to your where you're at, Eric, he says Old Nation and Ellison are some yeah. of his favorites from Michigan. So yeah, I, I love Old Nation and I love Ellison. You guys, if, if you guys watch my videos, you know how I'm a big fan of Ellison. Yeah. And let's see. Billy says most Oktoberfest beers are more malt four with spicy and herbal hops to help keep the malts in check. See BGP guideline, German Marzen, see for uh check Marzen. Yeah, I mean you're your Oktoberfest, they're lagers, and they are going to be more malt forward because you're going to get that and how they actually brew those type of beers. I just don't know if they were actually going for the Marzen with the collaboration beer. Um, for me, a true Oktoberfest or Marzen is more like some of the other stuff that we're seeing for some of the other type breweries. I just don't, you know, it may get put into that category. I can't say it does or doesn't. It just doesn't. I haven't had it for one, so I can't see what it does taste like for sure until I actually have one. And I was trying to still find a place where I can get a single and not have to buy a six pack, but it seems like everybody's got it in a six pack and everything. So um, eventually, who knows? Maybe I will pick it up, but we'll see. Um, hey, Eric. Yeah, go ahead, Todd. On the Ellison Brewery, do they uh, distro that or do you got to get it at the brewery? Uh, they, do they, they, they distro their kind of their. Every, kind of everyday line out but like some of the brewery only beers i had to go like their gravity shift i i had that that's pretty good there i think there was called a big black stout that one's a brewery only but a lot of their everyday kind of beers are there they'll distro all around michigan i don't know if they distro outside that's the only thing i don't know if they do or not well, that's why I'm mad. I didn't know if they canned and just, you know, within the state or if you just had to go there. And, I know it's within the state. I don't like it, but I don't know if it's in uh, Indiana or Ohio or maybe Illinois. I don't know if they've gotten out that far yet. Yeah. I, I haven't seen it here. I was, I was just wondering. Yeah, I, I like their Dawn Street Pale Ale. I like, like I said, I like the other two beers that I had. There's a, uh, they're one of their IPAs, a house IPA that I like quite a bit. Um, their tiramisu, I believe that I'm probably pr mispronouncing that, but their tiramisu stout, eh, I, no, was it for you? No, it wasn't for me, <laughs> but they, they have good beers there. It's just one of them is what the one that I really didn't care for. But if you guys go to the brewery there, if anyone's around the Michigan area, I mean, go to that brewery there in East Lansing. That's, it's a nice brewery. Very nice. Nice. I've had, a. Uh... I forgot what brewery did it here, but we had something else terribly used out. And they actually did a pretty good job with it. It's, uh, you know, as you would expect, to have a little bit more of that sweetness on it. But I thought it was, they did a pretty good. We had one that actually it was uh, Listerman had done a couple of years ago. And it was called Lemon Pound Cake. And it pretty much tastes like Lemon Pound Cake when you drink it. It's freaking phenomenal. It was at one of the uh, Winter Beer Fest that we had. Um, I was wondering I was wondering how that one was. Yeah, it was. It was. It was as good as you imagine, Todd. It's good as you imagine. <laughs> <laughs> it sound it sounded fantastic, but I never did get a chance to get that. <laughs> um, Billy says Union Craft Brewery Source Beer won a few awards. They are out of Baltimore. Uh, Cody says Ellison killing it, of course. And then Corvallis just opened their seven brewery. Burning beer said, "I'm not familiar with Corvallis, so any good stuff with them? Let us know." And Eric remarked he's 30 minutes from Ellison. Uh, Foamy Head now having a 2018 BBA Pumpkinator from St. Arnold Brewing. And the only other person I've ever seen mention St. Arnold was actually drunk in one because he gets St. Arnold. He had a thing uh, last year from them down there. So what is their beer actually like? You know, what do you like about that one, Foamy? Let us know um, on it as well. Um, 
Burning Beer Dirt Road, not bad for 50K population when school was in. And Cody says, I noticed with DDH Revolution from Ellison, it almost had a sweet heart taste in a way. It was an awesome beer. So that's what the double dry hop revolution. Did you have that one from Ellison? Which one was that? The uh, DDH double dry hopped revolution. Uh, I've had their, the, the mosaic evolution and I got the Citra evolution in my refrigerator. Okay. So he said the DDH had a little bit of a sweet tart taste. He thought, um, and then burning beer says, that sounds good for me. And then Marty, hello, Marty. Welcome in, brother. And uh, he says, hello, Jamaica girl. Welcome, Jamaica girl. Always nice to get a female's opinion on things in here as well. So feel free to chime in, too, because these guys need to be kept to a level. So <laughs> <laughs> hold it down for the ladies. Um, Drogan one says, don't tell anyone. Um, I'm talking about St. Arnold. <laughs> um Burden Beer says, I'm guessing it's a bot, so I'm not sure what Burden Beer was talking about there. Um, Billy said, we have two new craft breweries opening up here on the Del Mar, Virginia Eastern Shore. And it'd be getting like, Billy, how many beers, I mean, brewers, how many breweries do you have around you where you're at right now, do you think? Um, Burden Beer, block 15 out of... Block 15 out of Corvale is son talking about that. <laughs> well, Sticky Hands is a well-known, he said as well. So I haven't had that one. Uh, he says, pumpkin has no taste. It just adds body. The pumpkin pie spice is what it adds taste. A pumpkin pie beer with pie, crime, pie crust malt, in my opinion, a brown ale or porter or stout is best base for a pumpkin. Um, yeah, so I mean, like the stout is what they use for the warlock, and it really does... I think kind of accentuate that and everything. And he says over 30 where he's at as far as breweries too. So a lot of places, a lot of breweries. Oh, I'm going to crack this other one open here. Uh-oh. That's only number two. Well, yeah, number two now, number five on the night. That's <laughs> <laughs> only number five, but it's number one in the heart, baby. Well, I was down to my parents that night. Coke and maybe Captain Morgan. Yeah. Ooh. I mean, Captain Morgan in a while. I was sailing with the captain. Yeah. <laughs> I am about through my Jameson castmates out, though, which I do have a review on that that I'll upload here at some point, too. Yeah, I'm Gotta, curious to see what you thought about that. I know yeah. you kind of hinted to it, but. Yeah, I was a little bit more into that one than the IPA, but still I feel like it wasn't as great as what I was expecting. I thought it was solid and decent, something different. But really, at that point, you're into the Irish whiskey. So it's kind of yeah. like, why even mess with it? Mm -hmm. More of a marketing gimmick, I think, in my mind and people's heads. And, you know, it's like if you put that on there, I think some people think they pick it up, but it's already been kind of built into it because they see it on the label. Yeah. You know? mm hmm. And then I saw a thing this week. Well, NPR had a report that came out like 12 hours ago. Because you always got to love like the gloom and doom that comes around beer all the time. So they're saying that concerns around the environment and things that beer prices could double over the next like 10 years or something because of the fear of climate change and all of that. And the brewers are like, now hold on again when the last, like, hold on. We got it under control. Don't you start putting stuff like that out there. <laughs> no, so. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> and a big shout out to Lance because Lance is back. He's uploading videos again, I saw. so Lance the Lush. Lance the Lush is ah! a new season. Now, why are they putting climate change towards beer or brewing beer or just Well, the climate change, what they're saying is the the climate change is going to affect the crops. Yeah. Oh, oh right. so affecting the supply for the grain and for everything like that for the base type stuff, and that's going to drive some of the costs. Also, if you're running the situations where you'll see it on the news once in a while comes up with like some of the water reservoirs that start to dry up a little bit, you're having less things. So it's kind of all coming together along those lines, but it's kind of so far out there that I don't think people are really thinking that's going to be the case as of yet. So time will tell, but. It's one of those pieces that just uh, kind of popped up. It's more like clickbait than anything, I think. Yeah. Were, were they were they talking ten years? I thought it was sooner than that. 
I thought it was just like uh, a couple well, here, three well, years. The one that I saw, let me take a look here. Maybe I, maybe I read that wrong. But the only thing that gives like tons of thinking... legitimacy is that it was ran on NPR. It's like, you know, NPR usually walks the line pretty steadily. So it's kind of like, hmm, maybe this is something of interest. Right. Yeah. Let me see. You're, you're, it's probably that's probably closer to the truth. I was just thinking of the article I saw uh, yesterday. I think it was talking about that. I was thinking they were saying like this, as close as two to three years. I was thinking they were saying, but I thought that seemed awful soon though. Yeah. I'm looking on here. They're saying global yields could drop about 17 percent through severe droughts. In different scenarios, it actually doesn't have the full timeline on here that I see, because of course NPR, you got like a ton of stuff they wrote about it here. <laughs> Try to scroll down through it. Uh, they said, yeah. So they said weather events so extreme they could currently strike only once every hundred years could occur as often as every twenty four months. Um, but they're not really giving anything in there, but it's kind of more the reply from all the, the breweries and stuff too, saying how they would be responsive to some of this. He to believe it. Like they had the, uh, a trade group based in Boulder, Colorado, the Brewers Association there said, we will adapt as the planet's climate changes, therefore avoiding such significant impacts. President of the Idaho Grain Producers Association says if warming happens as they say it will, my impression is that it will come in small incremental increase over a long time and farmers will be able to change with it. So they're more optimistic about what may happen out there and stuff. So, you know, we'll see. When the new invention of a new beer style will come about, we'll have to come up with they something. Did. Yeah, I'll come up with something. If not, you know, maybe Lagunitas at that point to have growth and we'll just all start drinking marijuana water. So hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Canada just just did legalize marijuana. They can't from what they told me, they can't keep it on the shelves in California in the dispensaries. It's selling out like crazy. And they may actually go to Canada now since Canada legalized it. So who knows? That might be an opportunity out there. But uh we gotta we gotta see if we just need to get up in the Canadian provinces. <laughs> I said we'd have to see if Earth actually has a card to go to the dispensary, but then again, <laughs> mailing it to us, and I'm sure we get there plenty. You go. one of the dogs will probably be like, and then Earth's getting on a raid and he's getting arrested. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, all I did was get beer. That's all I got. I, didn't yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if he has the time. He wants to serve the time for trying to take that kind of risk. So yeah, but. uh Let's see here. Going back. Um, <laughs> Cody Stark says, you you guys see Conor McGregor's proper 12 Irish whiskey, LOL. I have not seen that, but I saw Conor McGregor's ass whipping on MMA a few weeks ago. <laughs> 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 he talked a little too much. He got the wrong guy pissed off at him. And yeah. I haven't seen MMA like actually jump the gate and go after other people with him, but that was kind of interesting too. <laughs> But he got under his skin on him and everything. And he actually is looking for – he said he wanted a rematch now. He's trying to get a rematch against the guy. But, oh, yeah, he just asked he me to like put Connor down. Yeah. Well, Connor's like Rousey was, like, hasn't been able to rebound since they got those first losses. Mm -hmm. Struggling a little bit. Um, Billy says he has a migration series from EVO limited edition from 2015. A rum barrel ale will be delivered into when it gets colder. So he's got that ready for when the weather breaks. Um, Burning Beer said, how about an early cold snap killing crops too? So that could that's another, you know, all these different things that can happen weather-wise can affect the different crops. And you're talking about the ingredients that are needed for beer. So, you know, global, the bad thing global, is uh, global change and global warming, whatever you want to call it, does have a concern there. There was one report that came out. A um, little off topic there, but they were saying like they're expecting like a catastrophic type event to happen by 2040 now they're predicting um, from like a weather type thing if things aren't changed up or something that we'll see if something happens. But, you know, but it's kind of interesting. Like each year you get more of these hurricanes, you get more of these 
tsunamis, you're getting more of these like volcanoes. You do have a lot of stuff happening that you weren't happening as much, you know. I mean, as a I think as a kid, we had the Mount St. Helens eruption. And then never heard again, and we hear anything else about a volcano. And then now you got like a couple <laughs> happening, like like Hawaii, like get off Hawaii, we got hurricane, get back on Hawaii, we got tsunami coming. <laughs> now it's kind of like all these different things that are taking place out there. So or hey, get off Hawaii, there's a nuclear bomb coming. Right. <laughs> <laughs> or you couldn't eat the sushi because Japan had a nuclear thing happen over there. You know? it's, just, it's like all kinds of stuff just taking place. So. Which uh, I don't know if you guys saw it was an interesting thing out there off topic again here, but um, they had the flood in the floors and one of the places that got hit was actually a, a pig farm. And they said it was like all these different, they show images of all the different number of pigs that were there. And they're like, what are you going to do with these pigs? And I guess the concern was that people would actually still try to market and sell them out to the meat. So a lot of people are like now not trying to eat pork <laughs> for like a few months just to make sure they don't get bad pork sent their way. So you never know what's going to happen because you know, you look at cars, like they were showing the reports on cars, like in the flooding, they were selling them other dealerships around the country and people didn't know it. They started having problems. They, these companies are going to try to recoup their money back if they can somehow. So, wow. Hmm. Just a little something off topic there. <laughs> don't buy pork and don't buy a car for a year. <laughs> 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 uh foamy has it foamy has his pumpkinator is a stout just released mid-october so brewed with fresh pumpkin as far as he knows um cody said back to eric yep up in the tri-cities uh eric said over by detroit then oops sorry tri-cities uh he says bay city midland area and saginaw lol yeah i'm gonna try some more beers from uh not saying of a sagging talk um because all I had was their Neapolitan and one of their other ones. I still haven't done the blueberry one. I see that all the time, the blueberry stout. Have you had that one? I Is have not. I've seen it all the time, too. I, like, I need to just pick yeah. it up and drink it one sometime. I think the Neapolitan's on one I've had, too. The Neapolitan. Which is really good. Yeah. That's, that's really I good. No, I like to talk to them how they came up with that. Because, I mean, it's just weird how you get the flavors at different points coming out of it. You have a vanilla. You have a chocolate. You have a strawberry. And it's like, how do you just, it's like, it must be as it warms one more, one starts to take over a little bit more or something. So it's genius. However they did it. Yeah. <laughs> Very smooth. It's, it's, def it's, it's definitely liquid Neapolitan in a bottle for sure. Yeah. Cause you do get every <laughs> single flavor in the, in it. It's weird. It's like you feel the calories building, but you don't care cause you're enjoying it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I think my pants are getting tight already. I'm not even done with the beer yet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Bernie right out of buckle. Bernie Beers that he just recently found out Hay City Rollers are from Michigan. They're from Scotland. I haven't had anything from Hay City Rollers. Cody was going to get some beer, but now he's on call two hours longer until 12. So that sucks. So now he's on call, so he can't drink right now. Uh, we'll, we'll drink for you. We'll drink for you. And then, and then Bernie Beer said Bay. So maybe it's Hay Bay. Hey, Bay Rollers? Rollers Bay? What's going on there? Um, Cody Stark. Khabib said, let's talk now in the cage on top of Connor LMAO. So, <laughs> yeah, he pretty much had him. And the whole thing with the refs, like, trying to break him on this sleeper hole, he's like, nah, I'll break it when I want to break it. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jada Diva in the house. What's up, Jada? So he says, Jaden! Hey, hey, Rajay, how are you? Doing well, my friend, and hopefully you are too. And uh, another good channel to check out. Check out Jada Diva. And Jada, how did the uh, yard sales go this last week? And I saw you had some stuff out there. It was funny because Jada was on his channel doing a yard sale, and he had all the stuff all over the yard and everything. In my head, all I could think about was old school, like Will of Fortune. I don't know if you guys remember that when you were kids. And it used to win, and it would take you around. I'll take that for 400 I'll take that for 500 Yes. And all the time I look yeah. at Jaden's video, I kept thinking, like, oh, I'll take that dresser for 300 and I'll take that for <laughs> <laughs> But, yeah, hopefully you are able to make some sales there, by the way. Um, Ashley Sexton in the house. Welcome, Ashley, one of our Canadian brethren. So he's just drinking some homebrew. Got to keep it as cheap as possible. Did you, though? Did you know? Because it costs you <laughs> to make that homebrew. So, I want, yeah. Is it actually cheaper to do it or or not? I, yeah, right. it depends on what kind of brew you're making, I think. 
well, actually makes like double IPAs and stuff like that. And I mean, I know when I made a case of like a double IPA, or by the time I made the case was, well, I guess if you're making it yourself, I would say I would spend probably about thirty to forty dollars or whatever on this stuff. So if you average that by twenty four bottles, you are less than what they're doing on the markup with everything. So yeah, but you usually would get more than a case out of the out of the batch, though. Like a five gallon well, batch, would, usually uh, get more than. Yeah, I would do two and a half gallon batches. If you're doing wow, five, okay, you're okay. 40, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You get close to two cases. Total disaster. Per, total disaster. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you, try, you try once and then you just like, I'm not going back. I, I just said, I just said, piss on it. Piss on it. Like, fuck that. I ain't doing that. I'll just go buy it. <laughs> exactly, Todd. <not> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I'm done with it. F it. I'm out. <laughs> Dude, it sprayed all. I, my, my kitchen's here. It sprayed all the way over towards the refrigerator. It's on the other side of the house. <laughs> I was like, "What the hell?" <laughs> yeah, well, it, was it a bottle that blew up on you? Or was it your whole uh, like five gallon batch? Or? It was like the what? four bottles of the five uh, two and a half gallons of Mister Beer kit that I had. Oh, there, there you go. <laughs> that was hilarious. <sighs> I wish I would have got it on video, dude. It sprayed every freaking. <laughs> so you can always keep the camera rolling when you're doing those things. I, I'm still <laughs> finding drops. I'm like, how the hell did the beer get way over here? <laughs> like, well, I was gonna paint that wall anyway, so I guess I go ahead and do it. <laughs> like, huh? Brown, brown seems to work there. That's <laughs> good. I'm just gonna leave it. Yeah, right. go, go, go to Ace Hardware. You're going through the paint. You got like beer brown. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now this is about close. You, you know, you get the little cards out there and you put it up against it. Right. Right. <laughs> I'm looking more for like a barrel aged stout kind of color. I don't know if you've got that, but <laughs> yeah, and Bernard Beer just said choke out laughing, talking about uh Connor McGregor there. Um Cody, you may have had this, Eric. He says, gotta try Oracle Brew in here in Saginaw if you guys if you are around guys. Uh I have not. I haven't gotten up in the Saginaw area in God better than ten years, probably. I usually don't get up that way very often. And let's see here. Especially now I'm getting older. Uh, Cody said Connor only did well in the third round. So I didn't get to see the whole fight. I just saw like the aftermath or everything. But knowing how Connor, I saw the press conference leading up to it when they had him all there and pretty much turned into like a slap boxing match at one point. It was, uh, you know, he figured at some point somebody was going to get tired of Connor and just go after him like that. Uh, Eric Gilbert says drinking Scottish stout and Bellhaven black, baby. So I actually almost drank a Bellhaven tonight um, at the Scottish bar we were at, but then I ended up switching it up in the last second. But uh, Bellhaven, I actually like some of the Bellhaven beers. Uh, Jada says it went okay, made some money, but it was really slow. LOL. Yeah, it was kind of slow as far as people coming through a scene, but you made some money. That's a good thing. So that definitely works. And then Cody says he wants to start brewing when he gets his tax refund in 2019. And uh, it's a fun thing. It's a fun hobby to do. The only reason I don't really homebrew as much now, because I'm doing so much stuff with the other stuff with the channel, with the beer reviews and going to see breweries and stuff like that and everything is kind of just a time type thing. I would love to get back and do some more home brewing, but I uh, definitely encourage it. And I think one of the cool things about when you actually do – brew beer and it's not something everybody has to brew beer to be able to you know do these channels but i think it gives you a different layer to everything because you're kind of when you get in there and you actually have done it and you kind of understand more of the process where you're talking to some of the breweries i think they kind of respect that you actually took time to do that as well so i definitely encourage it's a fun thing to do um ashley sexton says i grew the hops use harvested harvested yeast five hours worth of water and 10 for the malt five gallon batch so there you go. Nice. So, nice. So there you go. Well, yeah, if you grew the hops and used the harvested wheat, that's pretty awesome. So Ashley, as farmer, farmer Ashley. There you nice. go. <laughs> and he says, uh, <laughs> it was the Bay City Rollers. He says, you know, you're old when nobody has heard of the Bay City Rollers. Lots of lot, lot, LOL. By the way, they're a band from Scotland, not Michigan. Yeah, now I've heard Bay City Rollers before, so I was getting confused on that thing. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then Jada says, I thought they were from New Jersey. <laughs> 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 or they're from Jersey. 
<laughs> and then they laughed about that there. So yeah, there's a lot of things you realize as you're getting older and some of the different things that you've seen and stuff and the way it relates to things nowadays. Right. It's right. funny that you brought up the Wheel of Fortune thing. I completely yeah. forgot about them. Yeah, it was just funny. I was looking at the video, and, and it was just like everything was spread out. And I was like, I wanted to have the camera on me, take me around the room so I could see all the different little things and, you know, the price tags on it. That would have been awesome. Uh, so, um, Wheel of Fortune style layout for a yard sale. Yeah. It was funny. At work today, they were. They were shooting some videos. They were doing a tagline, and one of the managers of our team, they all had to say one line. It was so hilarious. That's why they cracking up laughing because they had to say one line, and people kept ad-libbing to it. And they're like, no, just say this. And I kept thinking <laughs> of the Seinfeld episode where, he's, where uh, they're doing the line, like this pre these pretzels are making me thirsty. And that's how it was like in this office. Like They couldn't say just the one line. They kept <laughs> adding stuff. They're like, no, just say this. And they're trying to all say it different ways. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which, if you haven't seen that episode of Seinfeld, it's pretty classic. Yeah, that's a good one. That's Everybody good one. try to give advice on how he should say the line. <laughs> um, Eric said his local tap almost closed this week, but the staff bought the old owner out. Outstanding, baby. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, so now I guess it's employee-owned brewery, which is kind of neat. Um yeah. Now, who's again, that gets back to what we were talking about earlier, right? So you have to have enough people that actually do come there to keep your brewery going. You know, we all want to the local ball? spot, but you need the support from others. Now, who's the boss? They, I mean, if they bought them out, but the employees bought them out, then they probably elected someone to be the manager, I would think. And someone's probably the whoever the bartending or beer tending and who's ever doing all this. So they probably all came up with a group together on how they wanted to handle it. So they put the money together and probably set up an agreement and restructured it. That's pretty cool. So they were able to save. Yeah, that's probably a good idea, really. really. Yeah. So apparently there was a, I don't know if you guys saw the video online, but this went viral. There was a picture of a beer thief who went into <laughs> Texas. <That's all> <laughs> he, he stole five cases <laughs> of Bud Light. You know, we called him a beer. They went in, basically, I guess it was like broad daylight, grabbed the five cases, scooped them up, and walked out the door with them. And it's kind of like, is he really stealing or is he just taking out the trash? I don't know. I'm just trying to trying to figure it out myself. <laughs> <laughs> just, trying to, just trying to make some shelf space. That's yeah, all. Just take me, just take me back, guys. Please just take me back. <laughs> so now they're trying to find out who this guy is. They they ran a thing on CBS News showing it, it shows the other spot, but it's just funny. Because he like if you've seen, I don't know if you've seen the picture of it. Let me pull it up here. <laughs> and really, though, you got to think if he's, if he's stealing Bud Lights, you got to be like, all right, dude, you probably need it. Just like, <laughs> I mean, it could be water for hurricane relief. Who's to really say? I mean, <laughs> if you're stealing you're Bud Light, donate it. you know, I'm an I'm a macro lager drinker, but Bud Light to me is probably pretty bland and ugh. it's pretty like, like not something you really want to go to jail for there. So right. I um, think you exactly go back to jail. It sounds like. <laughs> so like here's kind of all he knows. Here's a picture. Of, here's the picture of the guy. Let me see. <laughs> my, my computer's going a little slow right now. Give me one second. Yeah, my computer's not fast as either. If I can get this thing to go. Share your screen, brother. Oh, I know what it is. It's let me turn this. I think my Dropbox is trying to sync right now too. That's taking memory. Oh, you can. You, I think you can disable it for or tell it to pause. Yeah, that's, that's what I just did here too. This is like buying a video game. Like I went out and I bought Call of Duty Black Ops Four, which if you want to see it on the gaming channel, that is now Rod J Gaming. You can actually see that on YouTube or you can see it on Twitch, but. I got the game, I brought it home, and then I had to let it sit in the PlayStation 4 for like four hours to update a download. I can't get it to come up. But anyway, you would think if you're spending $60 for a game or whatever, it should be pretty much ready out of the package. Right. And I know yeah. Todd knows what I'm talking about because when Todd gets the games, it's the same thing. It's like you got to come home and let it sit there. You can't even play it right when it's ready. <laughs> yeah, you're what like, what is this? What? what the hell? Why is it? <laughs> I just bought the damn game. Why'd I gotta update it already? It's brand new. And it really sucks is when you're 
when you're hyped up to play the game and you really can't do it. It's like, oh, I guess I'll have to play it tomorrow. Great. <laughs> it'd, be like, it'd be like your kids waking up on Christmas morning and be like, nah, you can't open your presents today. We're just going to wait till, till tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like, and Paul's in the house. Hello, Paul. PA Brew News is in the Hello. house. Make sure you check him out and check out Painting with Paul. When Paul becomes like the... Uh, the, the Bob Ross. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say the... The Easter in PA, if Bob Ross lived in the woods and had a ponytail, that that is Paul <laughs> right there. So he's <laughs> the uh, little fro for the ponytail. <laughs> and check out his video as well. Check out his channel, PA Brew News. A lot of good stuff, a lot of beer reviews, and also the painting. And I think, Paul, are you still doing the workout stuff? You still got that going on there as well? I want Paul yeah, to paint me something. Like I know you've been losing weight. Yeah, he has. He's been doing that trail hiking out there, so. We're gonna check out his channel. Um, and da, 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 da. this is what I got there. So anyway, I can't get the picture of this guy, but it's just funny. If you have to go out there or you want to Google beer run goes viral or beer thief, um, this guy down in Texas is pretty hilarious. Uh, what's a drunken one? Is it? That's what no, I drunken one. He's on a six. I think he's a six one muscular black guy. I mean, drunken ones. He pound for pound, he's good. But you know, I think this guy's a little bit bigger than drunken one. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a, just a little bit. Just a little bit. And he came in with like his. The funny thing is the picture they have of him. He has like his torn off muscle shirt or whatever on, and he's like staring. He's like he's staring down. Like he's staring at the cashier. Like I dare you to say something. <laughs> <laughs> And she's like, I'm not going to mess with you, dude. I get like minimum wage here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still fifty dollars worth of beer. Just take it. Like, come back and get more if you want. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here until midnight. Just take all you want. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and then I saw. Let's see here. So, I don't know if you guys have ever saw the magazine All About Beer. They also send stuff online, and you sometimes you get emails. But they're actually look at they're closing their doors. Wow. So I never really got into reading scenes though, which I don't know why. Like I'll read beer books, I'll go online, I watch beer videos, do that stuff. But I don't know. I never really did beer magazines as much. I don't even like like beer advocate tries to get me to sign up for their stuff, and it's like why? Why do I don't want to sign up for it? Yeah, I, I don't sign up for stuff either. Yeah. I mean, it's most of the time it's just news in the, an area that you're not in anyway. Yeah. yeah. About breweries that you can't destroy. So that's all an interesting piece for um, when you're actually buying beer at the grocery store, which apparently Eric may have missed this piece because, like, the number two thing <laughs> Eric didn't do when he got the Brooklyn beer. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> What is but it? What is it? It's, it's five <laughs> minutes for choosing better beer at the grocery store, right? So let me scroll down here. Tip number one, go straight for the fridge. Um, most grocery stores have both coolers and room temperature shelves. You want to concentrate on the former. Temperature fluctuations and heat are the enemy of the fresh taste in beer. So they're saying go straight for the fridge. And when you're in like a grocery store, not like you're – Beer store it might know how to actually treat the beer properly, but just at like your regular standard grocery store. Number two, check the day coats if you can. <laughs> exactly. Check the day code. It is like he says, with the exception of celery or aging beer, 99% of the time you want to buy the freshest possible. So and also like number three is when in doubt, choose cans. Obviously, you're keeping the sunlight out and things along those lines. Number four is shop seasonally. Because that's when you're usually getting the fresher type stuff in. You know, you don't want to go in in June and buy an Oktoberfest beer, you know, or, you know, go into a different time of the year and buy something that might be out of season. And then number five, reach into the sales bin at your own risk. Talking about some of the dealer specials. But then it does make the exception rule, which is maybe under the Rod J deal rule. It says the exception. <laughs> Sometimes a local store has an old beer or sale that actually ages quite well an imperial stout, a barley wine, etc. In this case, you may find a gem from a year prior that's essentially been cellared for you. You're rolling the dice on whether the store kept in a proper storage away from light and heat, but you know, you do have that opportunity. So 
you know, buyer beware is what they're saying here. But as you know, we'll use the example of the Spanish, the Spanish beers. You guys benefited well from the deal shelf on those. <laughs> yes. Dude, that brandy aged stout. Oh, that was fucking awesome, dude. <laughs> I still have one left, actually. Which one do yeah, you have? Mine too, yeah. Todd, what do you have? I think it might be the base beer, but I can't remember. 100% sure. You think that'd be the like, first one I started with, but. They're all like 11%, so it's kind of like. <laughs> yeah. But that brandy, right. one, that brandy one was fucking awesome, dude. Yeah. And for a measly dollar ninety nine, is that right, Rod? You saw those prices on the bottle, yeah. Yep. Dollar. It was a buck ninety nine, <laughs> boys. <laughs> Uh, how about the whole damn thing? I would have went back. I'd have went back and emptied the shelf. <laughs> for sure, for a buck ninety nine for eleven percent. Hell yeah! Yeah, and it's good beer. I mean, it held, so it's like good aged beer. I mean, it's no four loco at fourteen percent for two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for you, those of you that watched a couple weeks ago, we did the malt liquor. Todd could not finish. <laughs> That was a that was an interesting experiment. Um, I don't know what if or when we do another malt liquor show, but it was fun. It was interesting for sure. Oh, oh. Um, I'm gonna go grab another beer. beer. All right, Eric Gilbert has said Paul. Uh, so he said Bob Ross and his happy trees. Drunken one says Paul is my hero. And then Paul <laughs> says Yo, drink, drink, it, drunken one. Um, Paul says Ha ha ha, get a better hero. <laughs> Paul says the beer baron talking about the guy we were talking about. Um, Paul says five cases of piss water. And then he says magazines are only for porn. Magazines <laughs> yeah, are only for porn. <laughs> Vernon Beer says in 1995. Paul says true. <laughs> um, from uh, Vernon Beer. Uh, he says, I'm old and bitter, and I'll admit that. And that was Paul there. He said, I'm nostalgic. Uh <laughs> And Burning Beer says, I've heard of Chatterbait. What about Beer Bait, LOL? <laughs> and then Paul says, check those dates, Eric. So a little shout out to Eric there. Burning Beer, hot chick drinking craft beer in their panties. And Eric said, Eric Gilbert, love a good aged beer after being locked in the upstairs closet during a heat wave. So, yeah. <laughs> so interesting comments there. Uh, Naren Ganzat has just launched a fresh catch. The name of their beer is Fresh Catch, and it's actually going to be a beer to pair with seafood. So, all right, cool. I don't usually drink a lot of Naren Ganzat. I had some, and I've actually actually been kind of impressed. I thought it was actually a good beer for a low value that you got, or low cost. I should say high value, low cost. Mm -hmm. it's decent. Um. Let's see here. What else are we saying? The like Second Chance Beer Company and L. Smith announced a collaboration they're working on. Craft Beer Craft Brewery partners with Klosterman on new beer. That's here in Cincinnati. So Klosterman is a baking company. And they make, obviously they bake, so they make bread. So... Let's see here. And they're teaming up with Fretboard, which is one of our breweries here. Who kind of beer they're actually doing? Nice, Todd. What's that? What is that one, Todd? Uh, the Fox and the Hunted Coffee. Oh, I've had that one. I've got that one in the cooler, too. I haven't drank mine yet. I was going to say, I thought I sent that one to you. It's from uh, 18th Street Brewery in Indiana. Yeah, that's the one you yeah, that's the one you said to me, right? You said Yeah, yeah. 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 That one was that a good one. Good. You've had it, Eric. Did I send that one to you too? Or yeah, yeah you did. Okay. So Fretboard Brew is one of our other breweries. They're teaming up with Klosterman, who's a bakery here, to make a rye lager brew with caraway seed. The secret ingredient to the bakery's rye bread. I didn't realize that Klosterman was Cincinnati based. Yeah. Hey, the beer the beer is a copper colored lager using rye malt that will taste and smell like Klosterman's rye bread. Oh, there's gonna be a lot of people saying dark bread when they get the aroma. 
<laughs> that dark bread crust. Yeah. Bread crust. <laughs> uh, Oh, that's pretty funny. Yeah, so I don't know. Do you, sometimes I look at some of these things they're putting together, and it's like, why? I don't know if you need to have something like that, but <laughs> I guess it's part of the, the the whole mixing up of stuff. Like, what beer have you ever had, if there's any you've ever had, that you're like, why would you do this? Like, it was just not anything you imagined it would be. And it's like you really didn't see a a need for it. Is there any beer any beers like that out there? Like sometimes you get an IPA that might be barreled, and it's like, why'd you even put this in the barrel? It does nothing for it, type situation. I always I thought the doom from Founders was one that they didn't need to bourbon barrel in. Yeah. Because the, well, the founders, the, the, the founders DKML was one for me that was like, Yeah, why? That why? that's yeah. another one. That's another one. Yeah. That's a good one too. I was like, why? Why, why would you put a barrel age in it? Yeah. <laughs> That's the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> in the world of a lot of stupid things, that one right there. <laughs> that one rings pretty hard. Oh, Let me see here. All right, Drunken One says he's good. He said, all right, gang, got an early appointment tomorrow, so he needs to go. Have a great night. Cheers. Cheers, Drunken One. Thanks for swinging by. And make sure you guys check out Drunken One if you can on his channel. See some of the good stuff he's doing. He's doing a lot of walking, too, these days, isn't he? Yeah, he's dropping some weight out there as well. I need to get on that point. Yeah, I need to start getting... Burning Bear says, I'm drank. I don't know if he meant to say I'm dank. Or I'm drunk. Hey, hey. Yeah. <laughs> he says, solid choice, man. Cody did to, to you, Eric. Maybe in the beard. You open a new, what beard you open up now? Now, no. hold on. I don't know. Rod? <laughs> I don't know if that was a solid choice comment or not, but he said solid the choice. The beast. <laughs> <laughs> the beast. It's the beast light. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Burning Beer says, love him some pumpernickel. I wonder if there been a pumpernickel beer out there before. Probably has. Someone's probably messed with it. Uh, Cody says, question, Cody says, Subway Miller collar sweet onion chicken teriyaki pisner left my ass off. So he's like, that's for a name of a beer, having all that stuff. <laughs> there be, no need, there be definitely no need for that. <laughs> Burning beer says bad Scotch Ales. LOL. <laughs> scotch oh, Ales are good. Wait a minute. Dark Horse makes a good Scotch Ale. Yeah. <laughs> Drunken One did say barrel aged IPA. Like, I don't think there's really a need for that. I think uh, from the ones I've had, it's kind of like you don't really have to barrel age this. Stop just doing it. It says uh, Cody says people dog on Beast, but Beast Light is his favorite light beer. So he was giving you that for the. It's all it's like it's cheap. It's for me. It's under a hundred calories. Yeah, Eric Gilbert. He's getting into some Canadian Club Twelve Year Old right now. That's whiskey, right? Not a Canadian Twelve Year Old. Just making sure. Canadian Club. Even if you're in Canada, it's not legal still. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me spit out this beast light. <laughs> Don't waste a good beer, Eric. Exactly, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully the, the boys over at Crap Beer Pours won't chastise me by drinking a beast light. <laughs> they, won't, they, won't, they won't frown upon you. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> uh, Elevation Beer Company to release a false summit barrel aged beer, Belgian style. They're producing a Belgian quad. Hmm, that's barrel aged. Again, it's a Belgian quad, so you're already up there. You got the stuff sweet and everything. Do you need to barrel age it? I I don't think you do. I think you're no. just. I don't think. I mean, at a point, well, something comes up. Well, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I. Experimentation, I guess. Can you really yeah, go you wrong barrel that. aging anything? <laughs> yeah, if you would, uh, if you're gonna barrel age anything like that Belgian style, 
I wouldn't Ooh. wood barrel age it. I wouldn't bourbon barrel age it. I wouldn't rum, anything. Just put it in a wood barrel and just age it. Yeah. That's about it. And then Cody says that's why he likes it himself, talking about the Miller. I'm sorry, the Milwaukee best. Beast Light. Best Light. Beast Light. Um, Eric Gilbert, LOL, weed and whiskey. So, because <laughs> Canada in Canada, who now we got Eric and we had, well, we had Ashley out there as well. I don't know if Ashley's still watching, but they're in Canada. So now they get the weed as recreational too. Hmm. I think you're going to see America as a whole be like that. It's just a matter of time. <laughs> Burning beers, that is wrong. That is just wrong. He said barrel aged beast light. <laughs> <laughs> if they did that, I would try it. I would. <laughs> I would try that. <laughs> and apparently Night Shift, who I've never had a Night Shift beer, and I heard a lot of good stuff about them. They released Night Light, and they're saying it's the best craft beer in Massachusetts now. Just one article. Wow, that's saying something. Yeah. So that's like one of those ones up there in the Northeast as well. So The best yeah. craft beer in Massachusetts? Yeah. Better you got some than pretty good breweries in Massachusetts. Or uh, what, Treehouse? That's what they're saying. This is from MassLive.com. Now, it could be just some drunk guy putting this up there. We don't know. So, take a look at the piece here. Because you have to say again, did you drink every beer in Massachusetts to say that comment? Yeah. So, you can never say something is the best of everything unless you've had everything. I love the Julius when Joe gave that to us. Dude, that was outstanding. And that's one, I guess, one of their base I feel. Yeah. I can't imagine any of that. Uh, Bird and Beard asks, where's Night Shift out of? They're actually out of Springfield, Mass, I believe. Let's see. Who's that? Who's the beer? Uh, it's Night Shift Brewing. They do the one where you have the owl on the can. Have you ever seen the one with the owl on the can? That's Night Shift. Um... The old beer whispers, and they were in there. there. Well, they said here's what's made the cut on their thing. So we're going to have to pretty much say this guy may not be up to speed on stuff because this was done October 17th, which is yesterday. And he has New Hampshire, Smutty Nose Brewing, really old brown dog ale. Well, guess what? Smutty Nose isn't making beers now because they're out of business. <laughs> yeah, from, yeah, Vermont, the Alchemist Focal Banger, which is definitely a popular one. Rhode Island Proclamation Ale, uh, derivative. And then in Maine, he had Bissell Brothers Swish, which I've heard of Bissell Brothers doing some good stuff. Connecticut Fox Farm and their Gaither. So, yeah. So, we don't know what this guy may be talking about. He's, probably, he's on some news site or whatever. It's one of their news writers. So. <clears throat> He's been smoking a little too much. It's like one of your beers, sir, needs to be replaced. They're not available anymore. <laughs> yeah. Send him an email. Uh, Burning Beer said, cool, 30 minutes from his folks' house. So he's actually up there where you can actually check out. Yeah, if you check out some night shifts, let us know what you think of it. I've always heard good things about it, but their distribution isn't down here as of yet. Yeah. I've heard good I've things heard about it. Yeah. But, uh, Oh, so this weekend, went to go see uh, Bad Times at the El Royale, that new movie that came out. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, how was that? It was, pretty, it was pretty legit. It was pretty good. It was, uh, it had, it almost felt like it had a Tarantino type feel to it. So the way they tell the story is kind of like Pulp Fiction like, because it's not just from A to B, there's different parts, and then they fill in different chapters to it and everything. But, the acting and stuff was pretty cool. It's definitely worth uh, checking out, especially if you like those type of flicks. Um, they all did a pretty good job in the movie. Freaking, uh, uh, who was the one guy that was, um, Jeff Bridges was like pretty good on his, uh, his part there. He's like dressed as a priest or whatever. But the one dude that plays um, Thor, can't remember his name. Totally different role for him. Hemsworth or whatever his name is. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, Hemsworth. Yeah. 
Oh, look at this. Brooklyn Brewery is to begin selling beer in Colorado. Make sure you check your dates on the Brooklyn beer, though. I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> but Colorado in November, you will be getting Brooklyn Brewery. The that is just so funny. The like, version. That, that is just so not funny. Not a year old IPA. <laughs> How it's like, okay, we're in Brooklyn, New York. We're going to do beer for distribution. We're going to skip over these states and start selling over here. And it's like, it's just funny, the whole distribution process we have to go through here. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Brendan Beer says Jeff Bridges is a legend. He's definitely a good actor. I think if if you like Jeff Bridges, you'll like him in the role that he does here. He actually pulls it off pretty good. And uh, like I said, the acting and stuff is got some stuff that happened there you're like what pretty crazy <laughs> the ending was set up nicely but i'm still behind on everything else like i still haven't seen luke cage i still haven't watched iron fist oh now now i've heard they canceled season three of iron fist so then it's like do i need to watch season two or should i just not even deal with it nah, I, just don't bother. I think this weekend or next weekend daredevil comes out so that's back um, there's way too many different shows. I've got like stuff like the Mayan show I'm trying to watch, which was like the guys that did uh, the other biker show that used to be on um, on FX. What was the name of that one? That was uh, uh, about Mayans. Yeah, Mayans. But what was the show that was before oh, Sons, that? Sons of Anarchy. Yeah, it's the same guy did that one. I, I've been DVRing all of those and got through Ballers though. Decent. I finished a season of Ballers, which was pretty good this season again. You haven't watched the last one yet. Dude, I don't understand. I just, like, I watch it, and I'm like, I don't know how they get the pass to do what they're doing on the show. Just because it's so, like, in time with a lot of the stuff happening yeah. and all the stories you hear headlines about. And it's kind of like, you would we, think they'd be pissed off about stuff they do on the show, but it works. We just started watching the uh, Hunting's Hill House. house. I heard Netflix. that was actually pretty good too. It's really, it's really good. We're about halfway through the first season now. Yeah, I think I'm going to actually pick up and start watching um, um, the Man in the High Castle because I got Amazon for that too. And I heard that was a really good show. I don't know if you I guys have seen the stuff on that one or not, but yeah, I watched the first season and a half, and it kind of got away from it. But it was yeah. really good. Man. Yeah, yeah, I think it's on this third season now. Um, yeah, it is. And what's happening, I believe, uh, J.O. Is it J.O. from the Party Source? Party Source is in the house. One of my what's up, bro? close local spots here to also buy some brew. In fact, I was out at the Party Source two or three weeks ago. Picked up a couple things. So um, hopefully all is well there. And the Party Source reviews. You can actually check out that stuff there on his channel as well. And J.O. does beer reviews and he does, they do whiskey reviews and they do the wine. They got everything because Party Source has everything in there as well. So Party Source is one of the spots. I don't think, I don't know if I ever did a beer run video from the Party Source, but Party Source is where we got the Spanish beers from that I sent you guys. That was, at, that was in J.O.'s neck. I'm surprised J.O. and him didn't pick those up. Nice. Those were the deals. Yo, man, if you can get some more of those, send them all to me. Yeah, mm. those were the the Malda, the Malda. Let's see. Especially the brandy aged ones. Let me see. That's the only place I've actually seen those beers too. They were for they were the Malda. No, I'm sorry, the Malavita bourbon, the Malavita brandy, and the Malavita. But the Mal brandy was brandy, brandy was the bomb. Oh, so, hey, yo, if you guys can get more of those Malavitos, holla at a brother, holla, holla, Let holla. <laughs> we got people that like them. You want WWE Teddy Long, holla, holla. Yeah. <laughs> and Simon on his channel, um, over in the UK, he actually went to that brewery and did a video out there, which was pretty cool. So, nice. oh, yeah, he did one like it was like earlier this year or last year. But he did a video out there with the brewers and stuff, and that was pretty cool to check out. Um, let me see here. Looking at some of the other beer nose. Um, man angry about missing him being hospital after Chase. So apparently he was upset about his beer <laughs> that was missing. So 
Where's my beer? <laughs> you see, <laughs> you know, I gotta click the, I gotta click the link to see what this article is all about. Like, where does this happen at? <laughs> Wait, mate. Where's my beer? You see that video, like on uh, YouTube. I think it's on YouTube, and the guy is like driving home on a lawnmower. And he went to the <laughs> store to pick up beer. The police pull him over. Like, what are you doing? He's like, yes. no, going home. And like, you can't drive out here. And he's like, I'm not driving up with a tractor or whatever. <laughs> Doesn't sir. matter. Apparently, Apparently you're still driving, sir. He's yeah. still yeah. pulled over. <laughs> Listen to Eric's PSA. But you would think you would try to cover it up and maybe try to cut grass or something, right? Just pull into somebody's yard and like you're cutting the grass there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, get off the road. <laughs> um, Just trying to earn some more beer money. That's all. Right, right. So this says in Parmalee, but doesn't say what state that's in. A Parmalee man was arrested early October 9th for allegedly hitting a disabled woman in the face and eluding police in a stolen truck. According to the incident report, 24-year-old Levi Big Crow of Parmalee had given another man two beers, then became angry when he was unable to account for the two beers. <laughs> <laughs> the other man soon heard Big Crow yelling and then hitting a woman who reportedly had Parkinson's disease in the eye. At the time, all three people, as well as a fourth person who called the police, were reportedly in the apartment, but Big Crow left on foot after being confronted for allegedly hitting a woman. Wow. Jesus. Yeah. If you can't control your alcohol, don't don't drink. I don't know. America's finest. Yeah. <laughs> and Burning Beer says Florida, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a possibility. Or Texas. <laughs> yeah, or Texas. Or Texas. See, like some of the craziest stories come out of those two states for whatever reason. Or Cal could be California, too. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes California, yeah. Although probably with, with the guy like the name that name is probably like somewhere up in like the northern uh yeah he says there Gilbert says Levi Big Crow with a handle. It's probably like somewhere up in Dakotas or something. Utah, <laughs> Idaho, somewhere <laughs> like that. <laughs> Levi Big Crow. There you go. That's a cool name. Friends call me BC. <laughs> Big Crow, baby. <laughs> Have you seen BC? What before Christ? No, Big Crow. Oh, Big Crow. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said Twinkies, Jello, and root beer are deemed world's most disgusting foods. I'm going to have to disagree I mean, with that. A Twinkie <laughs> being the world's most disgusting <laughs> food? Yeah. <laughs> Twinkies never, never what? Expired, so what does that tell you? You know, I mean, if not that we learned anything from Zombie Land, is that you want to find Twinkies. Yeah, you want to find them. <laughs> yeah. They never go bad, so you're good to go there. Zombie Land 2 still hasn't come out, has it? It was no. supposed to come out. They were working on it, so. That's it. That's a funny movie. The Snowballs. Otters, Snowballs. <laughs> <laughs> Which I was never a snowball fan as a kid eating those. I mean, I was Twinkie, Susie Q. Oh, I love my Susie Qs. That's why I'm as big as I am. <laughs> <laughs> the cupcakes. Like, like yeah, cupcakes too. Cupcakes too. <laughs> <laughs> them, them damn snowballs. I had no use for them at all. I didn't, I didn't really like the chocolate cupcakes as much as the orange, but. Oh, I love me some chocolate cupcakes. But the snowballs were definitely the low scale. It's just like, who made these? Fire them. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Bernard Beer says Banjello, LOL. <laughs> Unless it's in shots, Jello shots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Jello shots are always good. Well, I'm not always. Jello shots. <laughs> 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 but I'll leave that for time, another time. The only time jello <laughs> shots are bad is like we'd always have them during golf outings. <laughs> and that would be a pain in the ass because everybody would leave their jello container or laying around. Oh, there's my golf ball. Nope, that's a jello holder. There's my golf. Nope, there's a jello <laughs> holder. 
It's like, <laughs> Jesus, you didn't walk far enough because you didn't hit the ball straight. Now you're coming across stuff that it's not even your ball, which made it worse. So um, Cody <laughs> says zebra cakes, but zebra cakes is little Debbie. That's a little Debbie. That's a whole. That's a whole different one there. No, 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 no. We we talk about hostess here. We don't talk about little Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> little Debbie is the zebra cakes. Um, Burning beer says funny bones ten out of ten. And then Cody says orange cupcake. Orange cupcake was very good. Right. Oh, and this tomorrow is the release of the new Halloween movie. So Jamie, Jamie Lee, Lee Curtis, Curtis is like a grandmother with a shotgun and a rifle. Huh? Jamie Lee Curtis is as hot as she's always been. She's in that grandma stage now, though. Yeah, but still. <laughs> <laughs> she's not babying you sitting now, Eric. <laughs> I know. Eric's I know. trying to get her over to babysit. It actually looks pretty good, though. Um, they were talking about the whole premise of the new Halloween movie. It's kind of like if what is they're saying it should have been what happened after like Halloween one. Like it should have been this one for the sequel. Like so, they want you to kind of like not imagine the other ones that actually took place in there. But it'd be interesting. I don't know. If we might, I don't know if we check it out at the theater or not. But it looks like pretty interesting. What what um in the series? How far along is the Halloween series now? I think like this one twenty five. Well, no, the one was H2O, but it was just <laughs> H2O, right? It was like, I think they forgot what number they were on, so they kind of threw that out there. But <laughs> that's that's what I mean, it's like 25. It's Halloween 25. It doesn't matter. This is probably like number seven or something, or eight, maybe. Well, uh, didn't they have Jason versus, I don't know, it was Jason versus Freddy, wasn't it? Jason versus Freddy Krueger, yeah. And then they had. Um, in Halloween, yeah, Season of the Witch, and in Halloween 3, where he came after Jamie Curtis in the hospital. And then I didn't realize they were doing a Hollywood marathon AMC, and they had the one with uh, Paul Rudd, where he's like hunting down Paul Rudd, who you forget was like one of the Halloween movies. Um, hmm. So, and for the longest time, Michael didn't die, and the, the character Donald Pleasance played didn't die either. The doctor's like, you're not going to die, I'm not going to die. <laughs> so, uh, Halloween 4, it looks like. There's more than four Halloweens, though. We did Halloween, Halloween 2, H2, or H20, and then Halloween 4. According to IMDb, that's all it comes up. Hmm. I thought there was more than I thought, that. I thought they did more than that, too. No, I mean, they yeah, very well can. It's like every five years they do a Halloween movie? Well, the first one was in 78, so... 11. All 11 ha Halloween movies ranked. Oh, 11 of them? Why yeah. does the first of them come up on here then? Remember, he had the one with Buster Rhymes and he escaped in the one he was in. Buster Rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> what did I tell you? A black guy escaping a, a scary movie rarely ever happens. I can't believe they put him in a movie. <laughs> in a Halloween that was, movie. That was Halloween Resurrection with Buster Rhymes. That was ranked as number 11. Buster okay. Rhymes. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Myers like, what are you fucking saying? I don't understand the word that's coming out of your mouth. <laughs> and then number 10 was Halloween 2, which was Season of Witch. And we all know that was like a terrible one. It had no, nothing to even do with anything. And then in 2007, we had Halloween. That was the one directed by Rob Zombie when they tried to do the remake of it. Mm. Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, a.k.a. Halloween 6, was number 8. Then we had Halloween H2O, which was number 7. And I think LL escaped in that movie because he was in that one, too. Yeah. Uh, Halloween 5 was The Revenge of Michael Myers. That was ranked number six. Then Halloween 2018 is ranked number five. That's the one that's about to come out there saying. Oh, no. Halloween 3 was Season of the Witch. I thought the other one was Halloween 2. But Halloween 3 Season of the Witch oh, three, yeah. was actually ranked 
number four, which I think that's way too high. Halloween two was ranked number three. Halloween four, the return of Michael Myers, ranked number two. That was back in 88. And then, of course, the original in 78 was number one. The return of Michael Myers was pretty good. It was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was funny when he had the, um, you mentioned like it was Freddy Krueger versus Jason. I remember like being a kid and, you know, you'd have a kid, you'd have like a sleepover with your buddies on that and everything. You're like, what do you think will win if so and so fought so and so? You know, come up with those ideas and stuff. And it was funny when they made that movie of those two going together <laughs> with uh, Jason against Freddy, which, Freddy wasn't as scary. It's more of a kind of a. I don't think he really scared you as much when you were like watching him when you were younger. But someone like Jason or Michael Myers, who was actually like Michael Myers, is always a badass. Because Michael Myers never ran after anybody, right? He always walked slow. Like I don't know where you think you're going. I'm going to get you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep running all you want. But I'm gonna get you. <laughs> I don't know though. Like the first uh, Nightmare on Elm Street was pretty. That kind of freaked me out when I was younger. I remember. Yeah, people forget like Johnny Depp was in that first one too that got killed. Yeah, yeah. yeah the first Friday Thirteenth, Kevin Bacon got killed. God, how old was Kevin Bacon? He was like teens. I mean, he was a camp counselor. True, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he was. Yeah, he was. I'm thinking back, like, yeah, he was. In so real life, he was like 25. You yeah, know how that is. <laughs> This was an old man priest. I mean, it was a. It was a <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> let me see. But yeah, so. Yeah, it's Halloween. They got all the marathons, all scary stuff. I started watching The Walking Dead again. Although, Walking Dead, as they said, it has its lowest ratings of all time now. So. Yeah, it's kind of it's ran its course a little bit, I think. Yeah. Everybody's all into because this is Rick's last season or whatever. Like, Rick! Although, I've kind of become more of a Negan fan on there now. Like, <laughs> just because, you know, he's... He's kind of the most interesting person guy. on there now. Yeah. When the way he, like, says stuff and does his line, I mean, it's just like, you know, he's not afraid of doing it. You know what's going <laughs> uh, yeah. Like I never followed the graphic novels. Is it still going semi close to the graphic novels, or do you know? I think it's kind of close to it. Maybe it might be off of it a little bit just because um I don't know how much far the novels went. It's kind of like Game of Thrones, they're saying. Like I guess Game of Thrones has been also long now. It's like in a different area where the book didn't go. So it's like people don't know what may happen at this point or whatever. So but it's yeah. funny because they got the Walking Dead, and then they had the Fear of the Walking Dead. And it's, it's almost terrible. like they took they took Morgan off of the Walking Dead to put him on Fear of the Walking Dead, trying to get people to go that way, I guess, to watch it. So, mm -hmm. well, I assume that they at some point they'll merge together. But <clears throat> yeah, because they're all in the same scope now with Morgan on the other show. Uh, they did like a time jump with the Walking Dead and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Fear the Walking Dead, though that, that cast of characters on there is just terrible. That was that was a terrible casting by whoever casted that show. Yeah, storyline bad though. No, well, the storyline was I mean, it was okay, that but was like, okay. it was like the beginning was... of everything. So, like the Walking Dead was after things happened, but then Fear of the Walking Dead was like as the things that have took place to make it happen, I guess. But the the writing and the acting, I didn't think was as good as the Walking Dead. No, not at all. No, it wasn't, it's not even close, really. But I hung on to that one as long as I could, and I finally just like dropped it. I was like, I don't care. They merge, whatever it is. They merge. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, I got lucky. Like, you the go, characters on there, just like, I just didn't, I mean, you just didn't care about any of them. It's like, they just, yeah. just wasn't very good. Like, the cast wasn't very good. I mean, I like the kid on there that was like the. Uh, it was, yeah, he was the best one. He wasn't even on there half the time. Trying not to overdose, he was like a druggy type thing and recovering and stuff. <laughs> it's like when you're crazy, you see things different. So he was figuring stuff out because he was like half crazy. Like, <laughs> but nobody I went to listen with you, to him. He was on drugs. He was the best character on there, though. He was yeah. the most interesting and and you know somebody you actually kind of like watching. And he was never on at half the episodes. He was only on there like ten minutes. And then someone like this stuff, like the one that played his mom and the, the stepdad or whatever. 
you know, it was just some of the same stereotypical type thing that they would say, and it's like, oh no, that wouldn't happen. Or Bob was like, it's just like it was like so typical. You knew what they you predict it was predictable what they were gonna do, and it's like yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then you're like, just kill that guy because he's lost. He doesn't know what's happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, enough, enough already. Just put him out yeah. of his misery. Then you get mad because the guy is still alive. Like, why is he still here a week later? He should be dead by now. <laughs> Anybody else would have been dead. It's kind of the way it was with Carl. So. Yeah. Uh, Cody says Negan is kind of comical, LMAO. Yeah, he is. That's the thing with Negan. He's kind of fun as a character, and he's kind of comical and stuff he says and everything. And they put some good writing for his lines and stuff, and the guy that plays him was pretty solid. But it's, uh, yeah. At first, it was kind of like people felt a certain way, but then it's like you start as you understand the character. It's kind of like what he's doing kind of makes sense in the way that he's trying to do it type thing too. So, but yeah. Do you watch uh, Better Call Saul? No, I wanted to, and I started DVR at one point, but never got a chance to watch it because everybody talked about how good it was. All and him coming over from uh, uh, bad uh, Breaking Bad, Breaking which bad. I never saw Breaking Bad either. Which uh, what? You I gotta seen, uh, like Breaking Bad. I haven't seen any of the others. Yeah. Oh, Rod, you got to watch Breaking Bad. That's like one of my all-time favorite shows ever. Yeah, which I can watch it now on Netflix, but now it's like, when the show's over, do I still? You want to watch it? I mean, yes, you do. You over. should watch it. You should watch it. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah, that's what I heard. It was how good it was and everything like that. And I'm still getting caught up on Snowfall. I'm like halfway through the last season, finally trying to catch those. Oh uh, man, episodes. I don't yeah, know if you've yeah. been. Not. Yeah, yeah, I did. I got to the I part watch that, now. I watch that one pretty much every week. The last one I saw was the one where. Um, Franklin goes to meet with the uh, the drug lord with uh, the uh, CIA guy oh, okay. to basically explain everything to him and stuff. But then it like kind of kills their relationship too. Yeah, uh, that's good. You need to watch. You need to catch up on that one. I oh, I got it here. I don't want to say anything because I'm afraid of might ruin something for you. So I don't want to say nothing. Yeah, yeah, I got to <laughs> catch up with that and. Uh, so, but there's just so much stuff that's out there now, and then doing that time, like doing the beer type stuff, it you know it's just tough to get it all in. Yeah, um, so many hours in the day. But for the Canadian guys, I don't know, Eric, if you're still watching out there, uh, Russian Beer Brewing opened a new beer mecca in Windsor. Oh, I'm sorry, Canada. It's in Cal Windsor, California. But I was in Canada for a second there. Thought you were getting Russian River in Canada. Sorry about that. But they opened a new one in Windsor, California. A Muncie woman known to employees of a Southeast Side convenience store as the Beer Bandit was arrested Tuesday. This lady was robbing beer. A lot of people still have beers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> they're, trying, they're trying to store up for when the hops go up and all the beer goes up, you know. <laughs> it's like in a problem. Let me take a look with this Bud Light. Let's see if this is over. This is in your spot. This is in Muncie, Indiana, so not far from where you're at. Why would you steal Bud Light? I don't know. <laughs> uh, let me see here. Well, this person concealed a can of beer under her army jacket. A can? Just one can? As she left, the Muncie woman repeatedly pointed at a clerk and said she had a gun and would shoot if she tried to follow her. Guess what? Clerks aren't going to usually follow anybody for what they get paid. <laughs> you know, no. Whatever. But like, yeah. F you, get the hell out of here. Yeah. Does it say what beer she actually had? Or Loco. <laughs> Four locals, you actually went crazy. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Colt 45. It says she was convicted of battery by bodily waste, escape bodily conduct, driving while intoxicated, possession of meth, public intoxication, and resistant law enforcement. Jesus. What was the first one? 
<laughs> battery by bodily waste. What the hell was that? Swinging poo and shit. She went. She went all monkey on him and just uh, started throwing stuff. She went. She went straight chip. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> yeah, I mean you can't make you can't make that stuff up. There's no way. <laughs> oh, you cannot, Todd. You cannot. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave that one alone. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's funny. <laughs> funny and sad at the same time. Like Apparently, during the Patriots Chiefs game, there was an incident with a beer throwing fan who got now banned by the Patriots and could face prosecution for throwing a beer at a player or a referee. Again, Bud Light pour his Bud Light all over Hill after the Chiefs receiver caught that seventy-five yard touchdown. Yeah, because he was like celebrating right in front of the uh, right in front of their little dog pound or whatever. Yeah. I think was the case. Yeah. You I'll whip my beer, beer at you, you peckerhead. Hey. Why, yeah, why would you do, you pay like fifteen dollars for a beer? Why are you gonna dump it on somebody's head? Yeah, why are you gonna <laughs> chuck it? <laughs> I mean, even <laughs> if it is Bud Light, you don't throw it on someone. <laughs> Right, exactly. I mean, in the end, it is beer, so why are you yeah. going to pour it out? Hmm. It's a Lake Erie's water crisis is so bad that this brewery is putting algae in beer. Mommy Bay. We cut down on the algae? Or say it again. Extra protein or something? I don't know. Let me see. Creature from the algae bloom presented by Mommy Bay. Let's see what they got here. It's their seasonal beer. Kind of just the name of the beer, though, I think. Perfect summer drink, strong enough to give you a buzz, but with such a fruity, refreshing taste of balance. It's heavy dose of hops. Like, maybe they are putting it in there. I don't know. I've not had that one, but Mommy Bay is up in northern Ohio. We get some. You might get some of that stuff over there where you're at, Eric, from them. Yeah, I haven't seen those guys, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't either. Yeah, I think we hit the the end of the line on the beer news stuff there. So once you get past someone throwing their own bodily waste, I mean, where else can you go from that point? <laughs> yeah. it's, kind of, it's kind of downhill from there. Yep. <laughs> that kind Man, of there's like, nowhere to go but up from that point. Yeah, that kind of hits the floor at that point. Uh, <laughs> but... uh Thanks for everybody that definitely watched here tonight. So, um, you guys got anything else you want to add here? Anything, Eric? You want to present? I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure we can go. I'm not sure we can go from there. I, I, <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's kind of shitty when you think about it. Um, <laughs> uh, let me see. Is it guys ever play Power Hour? Power Hour. LOL. I never heard of Power Hour. Power Hour. That's what Cody said there. Um, he's a LL to many rounds of Eddie 40 hand. We never did an episode of Eddie 40 hands. That'd be kind of funny to do sometime. I don't know oh, why. I, would, I, know. I don't know why we want to do it, but it just seemed like it'd be kind of funny. But Oh, geez. You might as well just say it. <laughs> if we did a show of Eddie. If we did a show while having 240 strapped to our hands. That'd be. <laughs> <laughs> I could say it just like. King, 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 king. <laughs> but that's another malt liquor show. Do we want to go that route? Oh, do we want to go? Now, wait a minute. You could get Bud Light and have two Bud Lights on your hands, 40 ounce Bud Lights. We make 40s of Bud Light? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I guess you can. Budweiser, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Although I might choose, like, if they did a champagne of beers, I might do a 40 of those. Oh. Hmm. The high life. 
<laughs> Cody says, fun game, L LMAO. I love to see that. And then he said, Bud Platinum. <laughs> wow. No, I, I haven't seen 40s of Bud Platinum. I have not seen 40s of that. <laughs> I'm sure they make it, but I haven't seen it. Yeah. But definitely appreciate everybody checking in tonight. I guess we've been going, we've been going about a couple hours. So with that being said, I'm going to turn it over to Eric. I'll let him do his little doo-doo. Do, well, I don't say doo-doo because just do what you do. Do what All you right, do. Man. Guys, <laughs> had too much to drink, please get a designated driver. If you haven't seen Rod J. Beer Ventures, this beer flow show, I'm going to say it one more time. Do not drive home drunk, guys. Because if you do, you're going to get pulled over by the cops. You're going to make you do the stupid-ass sobriety test. You're going to get a free ride to jail. You're going to have court fees and impossible prison time. And then if you hit or kill somebody, you guys know you're going to be in the slammer for a while. And if you kill yourself, all you've done is hurt your family and friends and put yourself six feet under, all right? Just sleep off your buzz and get your car the next day. Get an Uber, taxi, Lyft. Have the bartender get you a ride. Have your buddy come get you. Just something so you don't have to drive home drunk. Because in this day and age, it is zero tolerance. And if anyone follows my channel on Eric Alliance Fan, Monday we're going to restart the Malt Liquor Monday series. I don't know which Malt Liquor Monday I'm going to – or what Malt Liquor I'm going to – Put on the channel, but we're going to restart Malt Liquor Monday, and we're going to go through maybe eight or nine weeks of Malt Liquors, and uh, we'll see what we do. So check out my channel. It's Eric Alliance Fan on YouTube. There we go. And Todd, any closing remarks? I have nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't follow, I can't follow <laughs> that. I mean, I can't follow that. <laughs> Well, Todd, you know, Todd's always part of the show, so always make sure you check that out here. And then um, starting tomorrow, I'll start rolling out the new schedule so you start seeing updates come through for more of the reviews. And, again, I will respond to all the comments this weekend. But I think tomorrow I'm probably uploading the uh, Fall City Pilsner. And then I got another Lambic one probably for this weekend and a few other treats there. I think one of the ones I have is a Brooklyn beer, too couple of tall grass beers out there, although tall grass, I don't know what they're going to be doing with their brewery, but we'll try to get some of that stuff update. And then uh, if there's any beers you guys are looking for out there or questions about, or want me to try to see about reviewing, let me know as well. I had a couple people respond to a couple. They wanted me to try to find and see what I can do. So always feel free to comment there along those lines. Or if there's other stuff you want to see on the channel, always feel free to comment there as well. That all being said, I guess we'll go ahead and shut it down. Thanks for everybody that participated. Like I said in the chat, there's a lot of other good uh, tubers as well. And you can check out a lot of their stuff um, for what they have to offer. Eric Alliance fan who's here every Thursday pretty much with me. Check out his channel and then all the other people that we mentioned earlier. That all being said, look forward to catching you guys uh, next week. And who knows, um, Thursday night, like I said, it was beer flow, but I maybe pop up some impromptu type stuff during the course of the week as well. And then if I do, I'll put that stuff out there. Had a lot of people that really seemed to like when I did the promoting of other channel type shows. I might do another one of those at some point and some of the other things and a couple more of the, uh, the beer type presentation type videos, but appreciate you. Look forward to seeing you next time. Keep drinking those good craft beers. Remember there's always time. Get your beer on. Cheers. Deuces. <laughs>